champs. Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. It's the middle of October in Michigan, and that means it's time to start finding out who's good and who's not in the world of high school football. Really good matchup coming up for you tonight from outside of Flint. It's the undefeated Davison Cardinals visiting their rival, the Bobcats of Grand Blanc. Welcome onto the field and another great matchup for Game Time Live. Evan Stockton with you, Grant Perry's along in just a second, and we've got Carol Isles reporting from the sidelines as well. You know, Grant, when you get ready and prepare for this Grand Blank team, you really get intrigued by their ball club. They're playing well. They're 5-2 and two coming into tonight, and I don't know, man, their sophomore quarterback, Jake Morrow, has got a little pixie dust in that right arm. Yeah, he does. I mean, and playing fantastic ball. Only a sophomore in his first year as a true starter, just playing fantastic. 15 touchdowns to three interceptions, just playing complimentary football. Coaches said that, you know, we don't want to overcoach him because he's making all the right decisions. Uh, accompanied by a senior workhorse running back, number 24, Daniel Steele, that takes a lot of the burden off of his his plate and he'll throw it today to slot receiver shifty guy number 18 JT Weber who coach compared to Tyreek Hill uh, and you say whoa that's a that's a fast comparison but hey man this guy can fly he's lightning in a bottle oh by the way it's hard not to look good if you're a grand blank bobcat playing on this field many millions of dollars have been poured into this brand new facility we're really happy to hear be here as for the Davison Cardinals their senior starting quarterback Sawyer Glennie has a story out of a movie really his dad is the defensive coordinator he was the ball boy when they won the state title in 2019. Now he's the starting quarterback, and the question's been answered, Grant. This dude can play football. Yeah, and he's a senior year. Senior year, he's having a fantastic start. I mean, first year starting here, but playing out of this world. I mean, 23 touchdowns to only one interception, just under 1,500 yards passing, and really just playing that point guard role, facilitating, and they're playing their best ball right now. Uh, it's going to be a hostile environment here in Grand Blank. Really their first true road test of the season, so we'll see how they fare. And oh, by the way, you can't get to 7-0 and by just playing offense. Carter, we didn't forget about you. The defense for Davison's got one of the best linebackers in the state of Michigan. Yeah, and Carter Her uh, Harriman is just a fantastic player. All around true linebacker, a guy that you would want on your defense if you're a coach or a player alongside. I mean, all state, all region last year in 2022 and just playing fantastic ball. Eclipsing 70 tackles on the season. And keep in mind, they haven't played a lot of the second half this year in a lot of games. So those stats would be padded even more. But just truly a fantastic player. Committed to play at Miami of Ohio and just a true quarterback on that defense. Really given the coverage calls for the secondary and controlling the D-line stunts. So now for him to make an impact today. The head coach for Davison, Jake Weingartz, about as confident in a football team as any head coach in Michigan. We are darn excited to watch them tonight. Let's do it. Davison, Grand Blank, a rivalry game on a Friday night. Getting a look at one of the best teams in the state, Davison, against their rival. It starts right after this. You might not realize it, but tonight, you made a difference. Tonight, you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Because even though you just ordered a pizza for dinner, that one little purchase helps make a big difference. For every pizza purchased in the month of October, Hungry Howie's will make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, all on our way to raising $5 million. So this time, you didn't just order pizza. You ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Hungry Howie's! From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything through barrages of whys and how comes. It now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that will forever allow curiosity to obscure the line between technology and magic. Be curious, make magic. Lawrence Technological University. 
At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night, check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. This is one of the finer high school football facilities in our great state of Michigan. And tonight, the Grand Blank Bobcats, 5-2, and two, coming in, playing some good ball, or taking aim at their rival, and maybe, just maybe, one of the best teams in the state of Michigan. The Davison Cardinals coming in at 7-0. and oh. You know, it's interesting, Grant, when we look at Davison, right? Week one, they get this great come-from-behind win against De La Salle, who's won back-to-back -back state championships in Division Two. You brought this up earlier this week, though. Davison honestly hasn't played a close game since week one against those pilots of Warren De La Salle. So you do kind of wonder if they get into a tight ball game in the third and fourth quarter, do these guys have experience in a tight game like that? And we'll find out tonight because this is no nothing short of a hostile environment here at Grand Blank. I mean, the facilities, you think you're playing at, at a Division One program right now in collegiate athletics. Uh, you know, just fantastic atmosphere. The crowd's out, you know, despite the, the inclement weather that's incoming. Uh, you know, so the support's there, uh, and that tends to affect offenses coming into games. Offenses that come in to a hostile environment tend to get off to a slower start. So we'll see if these guys have what it takes to get going fast and also sustain that second half. Yes, there is the expectation of rain, frankly, in the entire greater metro Detroit area for the next day or so. And the hardest working people are our camera crew braving the elements tonight. Kara, the entire social crew on the sidelines also having to brave the elements. Grant and I are the lucky ones who get to stay warm and dry in an enclosed, beautiful press box. Grand Blank going to kick it away. Davison will start with the football. You're seeing the Bobcats in their home black, red, and white. And there's a bit of a light show, Grant, before the start of the game. Apparently every college pro and high school team must have a light show before the game starts now. It's quite impressive. I was never a part of anything like this, but now I am. And Got to say, man, this is setting it up to be a great game here tonight. Uh, the atmosphere is right, a nice chill in the air. Uh, you know, the perfect football weather. Couldn't ask for a better uh, night, a better game, uh, or a better time to be calling this game with you, brother. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Ben Thompson will kick it deep. We'll also do the punting tonight for Grand Blank. Trying to take down undefeated Davison. Off we go on a mid-October Friday night. This kick bounced through a Cardinals legs and Davison's got to field it and they've got room on the right side. A good start for an offense that doesn't need a whole heck of a lot of help. That's Buddy Banks Williams, one of their best receivers on the good return to start the game. Yeah, be interested to see how Davison starts this game out today. Uh, when you look back at last season, they played twice, Grand Blank and Davison, that is, one being in the playoffs and one being in the regular season. I'll be interested to see because last time, the first meeting last year, uh, Davison got out to a really slow start, got down 14-0, uh, and Grand Blank's defense really got out to a hot start. Uh, so interested to see how this plays out this year. Uh, and Grand Blank, you know they're going to want to come out fast and firing. Uh, let's see if their defense can fly around and, and get something going here. The running back to Glenny's right is A.J. Hill. Good looking back. Junior with 80 carries on the season and 13 touchdowns. Glenny, the quarterback, is thrown for 23 touchdowns. And he'll throw to start the game. He's lobbing it down the sideline, adjusting in the air. Davison has got a completion. Throw it up to Braylon Naves and let him go get it. 
Braylon Naves getting this game started. I mean, just look at this catch here. You're going to catch him at the top of your screen. Sawyer Glenny throws a beautiful ball and somewhere where the DB can't catch him. And what do they say? When the DB has his eyes away from the quarterback, that receiver is open. And then Braylon Naves with a fantastic catch. And that's nothing short of what we've seen. Braylon Naves is that deep threat kind of go route type of player for uh, this uh, Davidson offense, and, and he makes his hard catches. And, and I have a feeling that if they want to keep this ball moving, that won't be his last big catch of the night. Davidson right in business. First drive of the ball game. First run for Hill. Room up the middle. Hill with a big Gersh. Into the 20, he goes. And a little flex after the run for A.J. Hill. And just starting out hot here. A lot of replays coming in hot because these big plays are happening quick. Just run a little same side counter there, and then the linebackers get blocked at the second level, and A.J. Hill bounces off the blocks, makes a fantastic dash up the middle, uh, and then a really a crucial uh, tackle there by Anthony Perdue, number nine, for that grand blank defense. Two plays, Davison's in the red zone. Back to Hill, and this time he stood up as he approached the 15-yard line. Three Grand Blank Bobcats helping to bring him down. One of the first men there, Joey LaRobadier, their excellent middle linebacker. Yeah, and talking to Coach uh, Coach Caleb Four here this week, the head coach of Grand Blank, he, our linebacker room takes a, a second seat to no one. Uh, and they're going to have to play a big game today. As, as you see early on, they're getting some pulling guards here who Davidson is. So these linebackers are going to have to have their hands full. They're going to have to you know, attack at the point and try to get off these blocks and make some plays here. Uh, and that was a good, uh, you know, a short gain, but a good uh, play there, way to come back. Uh, Davidson ran that counter again. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, excuse me there, uh, Grand Blank was ready for it and made a good tackle. Glenny keeps, lowers his shoulder. That's always dangerous when a quarterback's lowering his shoulder like that, but he does have the first down. And we talked about, you know, Sawyer Glenny's passing abilities, but they're also going to run him in the run game here, and they're just going to split out A.J. Hill, number one, the running back, and bring him on a jet motion, and they're going to read that defensive end. It's a little power read. If that guy crashes and takes the running back, uh, Sawyer Glenny's told to keep it and run. Uh, does that, gets a first down, and you got to incorporate your defense to, you know, appropriately uh, you know, attack the uh, passing game, but also be ready for Sawyer Glenny to run because he, uh, he is a, a dangerous guy when he has the ball in his hands. First down goal for Davison. They'll give to Hill, and he'll trudge ahead for a couple of more yards up to the six. And really, you know, as we're seeing, you know, the first play was a, is a deep goal ball, the Braylon Naves, and now they're, they're getting the run game going here. And, and talking to coach, both coaches this week, I mean, they said that we're, it's going to be a run game emphasis. It's going to be in between the tackles type of play. Uh, and Davidson's coming out, and they're saying, hey, you know what? You're going to have to stop us in this run game because A.J. Hill, uh, number one for, for Davidson, is an elusive back. Uh, you know, I relate his game. To, he looks and runs kind of like Travis Etienne uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Also is a guy that they'll split out and get some you know, opportunities in the pass game. But right now they're just playing hard-nosed football, and they're driving this ball with ease. Lenny under center on second out and goal. They give to the deep back who keeps his legs churning and fights in for the Davison touchdown. They'll cycle through the roster to get their first six. That's Carter Harriman, the great linebacker, scoring a touchdown. Yep. And they bring him in on these short yardage and goal line plays, and they say, well, you know what, you're a linebacker, but go ahead and be a linebacker with the ball and just be a fierce attacker. Look at him breaking the tackle, getting to the second level, and just wrapping that ball up with two hands and getting across that goal line. I think if you're Davison, you couldn't have asked for a better start and drive here. A guy wearing a neck roll, running in for a touchdown. Somewhere Nico Palazzetti smiles. Ryder Ferguson adds the extra point, and a great start for Davison. Right down the field they go, and a 7-0 lead, not even three minutes into the football game. Hungry Howie's a great partner with the State Champs Networks, Mr. Football, and Anvil Awards. Tonight, order a little love, hope, and pizza. Help make a difference when ordering Hungry Howie's and their goal of donating $5 million to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Order your pizza at HungryHowie's.com. Man, Grant, if you're Davison, coming into a game, rivalry setting, big crowd, you know that other team's going to be hyped up. That's about as perfect of a drive as you could ask for to start the game. Yep, and you script those plays throughout the week. You figure out what plays work best, what plays you're going to, you know, you know, based on the defensive tendencies coming out in first drives, you know, you try to figure out your best plays, and especially in a hostile environment on the road in a conference matchup to 
ultimately decide who is the conference champion of this South Division Saginaw Valley League, you got to have your best drive on your first drive to get this crowd out of it. And they do that, and they kind of say, hey, you know what, Grand Blank, we can do it. Let's see you do it. And they kind of quiet this crowd and get right into it and gets up 7 nothing here early on in the first. Ferguson just made the extra point. Now he's about to kick it away. A couple of guys back deep for the Bobcats. One of them, their best wide receiver, J.T. Weber. Ferguson sends it away. And a flag. We will have to kick it again. You can hear the crowd. They're getting into it, saying you can't do that. You know, they're going to have to step up when they can. Um, you know, obviously, they got quieted here with that 7-0 run on the first drive, uh, but they got to play their part when they can. On the kickoff, illegal procedure on the kicking team. Only three players on one side of the kicker at the kick. Five-yard penalty, three kicks. You know, it was cool walking into the facility here, Grant, I don't know, an hour and a half before the game. Uh, most of the student section was already here. And considering it's not exactly a warm night, that's pretty darn impressive. Mm -hmm. That says a lot about your student body and just how much this, you know, the program and this sport means to them. I mean, they were out here early. I mean, 6 o'clock, 5.30 was packed. Hard to find a seat over here in the, in the student section for the Grand Blank Bobcats. So, after the penalty, Davison's now got to kick it from the 35-yard line. Ferguson kicks again. This one a Bounding ball fielded right around the 30. So Grand Blank has awesome starting field position as they get this ball across the 40. All right, let's go down to the sidelines and the person actually working hard, brave in the cold weather. Third member of our crew, Carol Isle, standing by. All right, well, Evan, you can tell that it's rivalry week here. I mean, the stands are full, it is loud, and these kids were just chomping at the bit to get out there. But this is nothing new. I mean, this rivalry goes back decades. Grand Blank actually winning in this rivalry right now, 34 wins compared to Davison's 30, and throw a tie in there. But Davison has won the last two times these teams have matched up. And, you know, talking to Grand Blank head coach earlier on this week, he said, you know what, Davison has been the man. But to be the man, you have to beat the man. So uh, safe to say both teams have a lot to play for tonight, Evan. That is very true, Kara. Davison's got that undefeated record on the line. Morrow taking a deep shot. First play of the game, and he just missed his guy. Purdue was trying to split the defense, and he nearly did it. And they go right trying to split those safeties. They come out and they see that Davidson's in a split safety coverage, meaning that that middle of the field is open. And what do you want to do as an offense? You want to attack the open area. You know, Davidson came out, hit a goal ball to Braylon Naves to start the game, and Grand Blank tries to you know replicate that and get Anthony Purdue, their tall, lengthy receiver, who also starts at safety for them, in you know involved early there. Just missed him by a touch, uh, but love their plan of attack. They're trying to uh, you know attack that open field and try to you know retaliate with a big play of their own. Last week, Jake Morrow, the quarterback for Grand Blank, was awesome. 13 of 16 with a couple of touchdowns. Now we have another flag before the play. Good ball. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Before we get any further, too, just to finish up on what Kara was talking about, how these two programs know each other very well, Caleb Four, the head coach for Grand Blank, Grew up in these areas, grew up in these parts. He's a Davison alum. Mm. And now he's got a coach against the alma mater. That's got to be a little weird. Yeah, it has to be. But, you know, it probably adds a little bit of fuel to the fire in a weird way, right? You know, you went there, you played for him, and now you want to beat him. Uh, definitely an interesting component to this game, but uh, one we should keep a lookout for. Here's Morrow evacuating the pocket and getting out of bounds. Tried to sprinkle a little of that pixie dust we were talking about on the play, but... Turns into a third down and long for Grand Blank. Here's the starting lineup for the Bobcats. Aside from the quarterback spot, Grant, we talked about JT Weber as well, but anything else on that offense we got to pay attention to here? You know, talking with coaches this week, they said they really want to see some push up front. So I, I really want to take a look at these five starting O linemen and see can they dominate the line of scrimmage? Can they get the run game going? Because right now they're finding themselves in a third and long, third and 15 here. And in order to stay in this game and really help the ebb and flow of their offense, they're going to have to find ways to get Daniel Steele, number 24, involved in the run game. Third down and a lot here for Grand Blank. Morrow stepping up, staying alive. He didn't get sacked, but he didn't get nearly as much for the first down as Davison bottles him up, forces a punt. 
good job there by the D-line, you know, kind of just keeping him in a, in a, in a bucket, if you will. Uh, you know, they know he's going to run. They're anticipating that, but they just can't get beat by his feet. Uh, you know, if he picks up a few yards there on third and 15, that's okay. We'll live to see another down if you're Davidson. Uh, so I'm sure they're happy with that. Uh, and they got some really good D-linemen on that, on that Davidson D-line. Well, we said force a punt because usually fourth and 12, you're punting. The offense is still on the field. And they're going to run a little check with me. Looks like they might punt this and, and back out a little bit. Uh, they didn't like what they saw. Low snap to Morrow. He did get the punt away, but the low snap killed the play. And Davison is going to start just inside the 45. The decision to pooch backfired. Backfire there. If they would have known in their heads that we were putting this for nine yards, I'm sure, sure excuse me, sure they would have went for it there uh, and try to get you know JT Weber involved here early. So keep this in mind as well. On that last play, you're asking the center Jensen Smith to be the long snapper. He's not the normal long snapper. It's Anthony Houle, one of the D linemen. That's another reason why there were many variables to that play. Moral of the story, Davison just marched it down the field on their first drive, and now they're starting in Grand Blank territory. Glennie will keep, and he's got a lot of green turf. Lowered his shoulder again and got the necessary yardage again. Another first down for Davison. And Davison's really good at this. I mean, they'll take their running back, and normally you see him out, spread out. You're assuming he's going to run a pass play or they're going to do a little jet sweep. But right now they're incorporating him as kind of a window dressing type decoy uh, to let you know let uh, Sawyer Glenny, excuse me, get open in this run game and really open up some holes uh, in this Grand Blank defense. First drive ended with a touchdown run for Carter Harriman. The little used running back, the always used linebacker, scored the first one for Davison. Here's the always used A.J. Hill. That run is an example of why they use him a lot. Power and slippery nature. Oh, boy, kind of came interestingly out of the pile. No flags, though, and we play on. Yeah, play on. You know, there's going to be some, some, some you know, tempers flaring. There might be some extra words said after a play or two. Refs are letting it play on. It hasn't gotten out of hand yet. Uh, but these two teams, they're rivals, man. They want to get after it. They want to beat each other uh, you know, so bad. They're neighboring communities, so they all know each other in some form or fashion, competing against each other in, in different sports throughout the season. Um, so there's going to be some tempers. Uh, it's just going to be about who can control it and who doesn't, you know, the second man of the party is usually one that gets caught, um, you know, in flag. So uh, both teams got to keep it under wraps a little bit and try not to hurt themselves. Fake for Glenny. Throwing down the middle. Wide open, man. Second touchdown of the night for Davison. Once again, they spread it around. Peyton Kokali, his third touchdown of the season. Yeah, really good job here. They're going to do, uh, they're marrying a lot of these concepts, right? They're taking A.J. Hill and they're making him a window dressing guy. But this time, they're going to drop back and pass. And then Sawyer Glenny throws a beautiful post route to Peyton Coakley here for a touchdown. Uh, and they got the leverage they wanted, right? It was outside leverage of the defender, uh, no help deep. And he just beats him inside straight, keeps it skinny, catches a touchdown there, uh, and does a fantastic job. Not even halfway through the first quarter, and Davison has scored twice. That is a 14-point lead for one of the finer high school football teams in the state of Michigan. Alta Equipment knows when it comes to getting your job done on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alta Equipment partners with the biggest names in construction with industry-leading service and support. You can give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA. Great support here at Grand Blank High School tonight. Both sides have a lot of people here. The Davison side feeling darn good. We are barely five minutes in, Grant, and already it's a Cardinal tidal wave. Yep, and they're, they're making their presence known. I mean, coming into this game, we said we wanted to see, right, they came week one and you know, had a two-minute drive to beat De La Salle at the end of the game, uh, but really hadn't been tested yet on the road. Um, you know, kind of been blowing through their opponents in the conference here. Uh, you know, so today was really their true test, and we wanted to see how they would start. And, man, are they passing the test so far? I mean, two drives, two touchdowns, I mean, in two different ways. Cardi Harriman with a five-yard run and then, you know, a beautiful play-action pass uh, to Peyton Coakley, uh, you know, for a touchdown there. Really cementing this first quarter, saying, you know what, hey, we're 7-0 for a reason. Uh, we want this SVL League championship, uh, and we're going to come get it. 
Second kick for Ferguson. That may have hit a grand blank bobcat on the front line. And once again, they're going to get good starting field position. Curious thing, Grant, from that first drive from Grand Blank, looking back upon it, you've got a running back in Daniel Steele who's great. Nearly 100 carries this year, almost 800 yards, seven touchdowns. But because on the first play of the game you took a deep shot and it was incomplete, you were kind of forced to keep throwing the ball, and that crushed the drive. I'm thinking we'll see Daniel Steele more on this drive. Yeah, I think we will. I think they're going to try to establish the run here. I think Daniel Steele is a, is a security blanket in which they feel good about giving the ball. I mean, four games this year, over 100 yards rushing, a guy that they can really count on, a senior workhorse who's played in these big games, played last year against Davidson twice. So he understands the climate, understands the situation, uh, and they just got to trust him and give it to him. You know, like you said, that first play, uh, you know, the first drive, excuse me, you know, they got into the passing game, uh, and then they got, found themselves, you know, not completing passes, and then there were some penalties. So they're looking to clean that up here and have a clean drive. There he is. A start to the drive a little bit better for Grand Blank. Daniel Steele spinning his way up to the 40-yard line, and that's a gain of four on first down. And averaging seven, you know, 7.8 yards a carry here this year for Daniel Steele, a guy that they really count on. Um, you know, seven touchdowns in the run game. Uh, you're just truly a guy that they really, you know, take, that helps take a lot of burden off the sophomore quarterback and uh, Jake Morrow. So, uh, you know, I'd expect him to get way more involved here, you know, try to incorporate him in some run game. And then when that run game's working, look for some play action. Back to him. Oh, man. Tried to cut his way into the hole and he slipped. Daniel is frustrated as every Bobcat fan watching. There was a lot of room on that run if he could have stayed on his feet. Yep. Here's your defensive alignment and your starting lineup for the Davison Cardinals. We talked about Carter Harriman a lot. Grant, that outstanding linebacker. Who else should we pay attention to in white and maroon tonight? I mean, you can't go wrong looking at all three of those linebackers. Charlie Armstrong, uh, Armstead excuse me, and number 10, Jalen Edwards. Those guys are really just a force to be reckoned with in the middle, and they don't allow a lot of yards. Um, as you can see here early on, you know, uh, David, uh, excuse me, Grand Blake's had some trouble running here early on. Steele slipped a tackle there. This is a good looking run. First down, Grand Blank had to make the first man miss. He did. And then he was in business. Yep, he was. And they run just a little bit of a halfback here. Misdirection. Hey, he's going to go one way and come back the other. All the linebackers go one way, get some good blocks up front. Makes number 10 there, Jalen Edwards, miss. And that's a rare occasion. Jalen Edwards is a sure tackler. But when you're a big back with some big, strong legs and Daniel Steele, you got the opportunity to make some guys miss and run through some tackles. Uh, but also, look for it. He'll break your tackle, and he'll also run away from you. He's got some good speed. On the first drive, Steele didn't touch it once. On this drive, he's touched it all three plays. Make it all four plays. Pretty good decision to let this guy run the ball. Continually, he's getting positive yardage. Another great gain on first down. And the stats show it all. I mean, seven yards of carry, and he's averaging about seven yards of pop now that he's touched it. Uh, they run a little outside zone there with a lead blocker. They get a good kick out block there on the defensive end, and he cuts it right up the hole. It makes this a second down and two. Uh, and this is where they want to live in. They're you know, approaching, uh, you know, Excuse me. Uh, they're approaching Davidson's territory. Uh, you know, merely marching on this drive, and they got that first first down. Once you get that first first down, uh, you kind of you know the plays open up, and you kind of come in within yourself, and kind of opens the playbook and gives you the opportunity to, to run some stuff you like. There's a play action fake, and Morrow throwing a gorgeous ball, tight rope on the sidelines. The first time we say hi to J.T. Weber as Morrow took a hard hit behind the play. Really good job there. And, they, you know, these, this Davidson defense, they, they like to run a number of coverages, but you're going to find them in cover four a lot, meaning that essentially it's man coverage on the outside, and JT Weber gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup and runs a little comeback. And, man, he can get out of his breaks like none other. I mean, one, two steps, and he's coming back to the ball. Really good job there by Jake Morrow, getting outside the pocket, keeping the play alive, and then finding his trusty target uh, in uh, JT Weber. And if it says anything, I mean, Jake Morrow, before this game, coming in, he had 64 completions. 40 of those were J to J.T. Weber. Uh, so they're going to be trying to get uh, him involved, J.T. Weber that is, uh, a lot and frequently. Here's Weber on cue into open space. Oh, my goodness, is he shifty. They called him Tyreek Hill. 
He's not Tyreek, but he kind of looked like it on this play. Yeah, and you got to try to contain him because you're not going to you're not going to slow him down. They run a little counter here with JT Weber. He's just getting the edge, and when he gets the edge, you got to you know hold your breath here. Makes the quarterback miss. Does a good job of fighting for those extra yards, and really just is a strong runner with the ball. Uh, he's tallied a, a game this year with over 100 yards rushing too. So they'll find ways to get him the ball, even if it's not in the pass game. This is a heck of a drive brewing for Grand Blank after Davison scores the first 14. The home team has marched inside the Cardinals' 10. First down goal coming. Morrow rolls, throws. That is a touchdown. What a response from Grand Blank. Morrow finding Aaron Jones for six. Really good play here. They're going to send JT Weber in a little bit of a motion. All eyes go to him. They go a little rollout pass. The tight end, Aaron Jones, the guy that got pulled up, the sophomore from the JV team, comes in clutch. Fantastic job there of, of really just diagnosing what the defense is in. They lose track of, of Aaron Jones, the tight end. He's running free in the back of the end zone. A little corner route. Jake Morrow gets outside the pocket, makes a beautiful throw, a throw where he can catch, uh, and then just convert there. And that's a big drive uh, for Graham Blank. Extra point up and extra point good for Glastetter through the raindrops. We got a ball game at Grand Blank to Bob Kent's answer and make it a 14-7 game. Every high school sporting event in our great state of Michigan has one thing in common, the officials. And officials are needed now more than ever. Go to MHSA.com for some more info because without officials, it's just practice. You knew, Grant that Grand Blank was not going to roll over in a ball game like this. I mean, you talk about a well-scripted, well-orchestrated drive. You set it up with the runs, and then you get some play action in there. They were just moving it up and down the field on that drive. Yeah, they looked a lot more comfortable in that second drive than they did that first. And like you said, right, they got ahead of the chains. You know, they, they came out throwing the first drive, but then they realized, hey, you know what, we got a back in Daniel Steele that can really pick up some yards on the ground. So they trusted him, and that really set up everything else. The play action became alive, and the pass game looked, you know, more, you know, excuse me, better than it did the first drive. Um, you know, so it's all about the run, right? When the run works well, it really opens up the passing lanes and gets guys open downfield, and it has those safeties playing more run than pass. And that's for the reason for the touchdown there. That the safety thought it was a run, comes up, tries to you know cover JT Weber, and then Aaron Jones sneaks in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Thompson's squib kick fielded near the 25. And once again, good field position coming here. Davison tackled just shy of the 40-yard line. That's Wesley Hughes on the return. All right, Grant, I'm giving you a dangerous power and making you Grand Blank's defensive coordinator. <laughs> Davison's offenses look great on their first two drives. How are you trying to stop them? I mean, we, what we've seen so far, they were trying to spread the box. They're trying to, you know, get things on the outside, and then they're running up the middle. They're doing some QB run. I'd really try to key on on Sawyer Glennie, make sure he doesn't run anymore. Then I try to give it, you know, let A.J. Hill try to run, right? I try to contain him, uh, you know, but also the pass game's working well, too. So you got to keep in mind. So I'd go two high safeties. I try to keep three linebackers in the box. Uh, but they're going one high safety here, trying to play a little man coverage, maybe a little cover three. Uh, which does help the box numbers in the run. Oh, boy. A.J. Hill was wrangled down as he tried to get into that hole. Just a bunch of bodies in the middle of the field. Micaiah Williams, 22. One of the men making a hard tackle. Yeah, Micaiah Williams, the guy that comes up on tape, that you're talking to coach, he's a vocal leader and just a great communicator on defense, uh, really flies around uh, on that defense, uh, you know, in that linebacker position, that middle linebacker for Graham Blank. Give to Hill, bouncing it outside this time. It is just tough sledding so far on this drive. He did an awesome job there lowering his shoulder, getting to the 45, and making it in a third down and much more manageable. Yeah, and that could have been even a bigger run, but Carson Lynch there, the DN for, for Graham Blink, did a fantastic job of holding it and setting his edge. And that play is supposed to hit up right inside the tackle, so right inside of Carson Lynch's, you know, his gap. Uh, but he does a job, good job of holding his gap integrity and, you know, giving Graham Blake an opportunity here to force, a, you know, a fourth down. Does the Davison drive continue? Fake to Hill. Glenny stepping up, unloading a bomb into coverage, incomplete. Naves nearly made the catch. One on one ball, Grant, we already saw earlier tonight. Braylon Naves going up and making a catch for Davison. 
That time he nearly made another great play. Yeah, yeah, and quarterback gave him an opportunity, right? Realized that, hey, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a 50-50 ball if I throw this thing, and I trust my receiver in Braylon Naves. Gives him an opportunity there, uh, but, you know, good defense there by Bruce Jones, number 23, the cornerback, of staying with his man. Um, they gave a little bit of a run-action look, meaning that a guard was pulling, and they, it looked like they were going to hand it off, uh, but the pressure was really good in the backfield. Credit to Graham Blank's D-line of, of applying that pressure, and then Sawyer Glennie uh, chucked it up, and it, it came down incomplete. Glennie, the quarterback, is also the punter. Oh, by the way, he was an all-league punter last year. Dead ball. Delay again. Offense. So, if there are any thoughts for Davison for going for it there, Grant, they're probably out of the equation now. It was a fourth down and three. Now it's fourth down and eight. Not the end of the world, though. A little bit more room for your punt team. Yeah, a little bit more room, um, you know, but kind of wipes out any, you know, maybe, you know, questions. They, oh, are they going to fake it? Maybe they go for it. Uh, you know, it kind of just solidifies that they're probably going to punt this deep to, uh, to J.T. Weber. They try to angle it away from him. He comes up and makes the catch, and then he's promptly planted shy of the 35-yard line. Davison and Grand Blank have played some great ball games over the years. Here's the last time Grand Blank beat the rivals from Davison back in 2021. Packed house. Bobcats dominated from the first whistle until the last. Would you believe a 43-7 win? And I promise we're going to get some dance moves later on that if I tried, I'd pull lots of muscles. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I can't do that. Grant, can you do that? No, I think like you, I might be slip, you know, pull a pull a disc or a little lumbar issue. So I just, you know, I stick to talking about the game. I'll stick in this <laughs> warm box. Uh, you know, those guys are playing for a reason. They're nice and limber, and, and they're ready to go. There's a reason I'm going to the chiropractor on Tuesday. Steel spinning like those dance moves. And to spin like that just to avoid a big loss, it's actually a loss of one. Again, that's Jalen Edwards sticking his nose in there. Yeah, Jalen Edwards, a guy that's going to come up a lot tonight. You know, 67 tackles coming in tonight, a player that is a dominant force at that Sam linebacker position. Uh, and also another guy there, the nose tackle, defensive tackle, Jackson Clark, uh, a three-year starter for them on the D-line, number 95, applied some pressure in there, almost had it at you know, a second and 15, you know, almost some more yards uh, lost, but, you know, Daniel Steele there fought for extra yards and got it back to the line of scrimmage, and then uh, Jalen Edwards wrapped them up. Steele running again. Not much room again. That's the recipe on the last drive. Daniel Steele all over the place, and it worked. This drive, clearly Davison committing to stopping the run. Yep, yep, and it looks like that, you know, right there, Tyler Dodge getting his name called, number 15, played that really well, you know, engaged with the defense, or the, excuse me, the offensive tackle and shed the block, and once he saw the ball commit inside, wrapped him up uh, for a very minimal gain there. Uh, Tyler Dodge is another guy that you're going to hear a lot tonight. Uh, you know, a strong force in that D-line defensive end. Um, you know, uh, deadlifts 500 pounds, squats 500 pounds, so he's a force to be reckoned with, uh, and we will call his name again tonight. Uh, he's a force. Third down, eight. Morrow given time. Looking downfield. Throwing downfield. Incomplete. Hoping for Lattimore. Knocked away. Robbie Martin had the coverage. Really good job here by Cortez Porter, number 19, the cornerback. He's the playing, they're playing a cover three here. He's got the he's got to be deepest as the deepest on his third of the field. He does a fantastic job of covering this corner route. Looks like it was open early, but gets a hand in there, makes it a hard catch, uh, and comes down with a, a PBU there. Another guy that they really trust, uh, you know, to put on the island, you know, in those coverages deep downfield. Uh, a playmaker for them that they rely on week in and week out. Got a couple of good sophomore DBs back there. Martin, 8, and Porter, 19. The guy who had the excellent coverage on that play. Grand Blank goes three and out. Banks Williams backing up and getting crunched. Tried to return it. That ended up being the wrong decision. The long snapper, Houle, cut down the field and made the tackle. Who said the snapper and the kicker and you know, everyone involved in the play can't get in on the play? Uh, you know, the snappers, I know when they snap it, they're trying to get down there and make a play. Anthony Hull comes down and just lays the wood and makes this a no return. Uh, you know, just absolute great tackle, just firm. You know, Buddy Williams is a guy that can get open. Uh, you know, he's a guy that can you know, make you miss an open space, but Anthony Hull cuts down that space and gives him nowhere to go. It's one of those where you field the ball, you pick your head up and go. 
you know, that was the wrong decision. I'm not going anywhere here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. But also, too, on that on that note, you know, it also is very good on his part. You know, could have fair caught it, but also saved some field position by catching those. Uh, you know, sometimes the coach is like, hey, you know what, maybe let those go as those guys get closer. But it's always nice to save some field position for your offense. Another pre-snap penalty here. Back infraction, offense, bring the ball in for him. Side-guard penalty, still for time. Grant, you know this. You played football at a higher level than me. Coaches will accept some penalties if they're effort penalties. I've never met a football coach who likes pre-snap penalties. Mm -mm. Pre-snap penalties, you know, that's, in our world, that's a mental error, right? you got to get lined up. you got to know your assignment. you got to be ready to go on the whistle. Pre-snap penalties are a drive killer. A.J. Hill kept his feet moving and then somehow got his way to the 30-yard line. He floated the extra four yards. It really did. It looked like he kind of like one last second just dove and got an extra five there. Jimmy Lacy with the final tackle. Um, but, you know, Anthony Hill, a guy that they, I want to see them get involved with. You know, they had a punt their last drive. They kind of got away from the run, the quarterback run. Um, but, you know, they can be really deadly when they incorporate that quarterback run along with A.J. Hill, uh, who's just a workhorse for them on offense. Uh, averaged 66 yards last year coming into the season. Uh, you know, now averaging, uh, you know, about you know 32, uh, excuse me, uh, about 107 yards a game uh, A.J. Hill is for this season. Back to him. Oh, my goodness, he was met in the hole hard. Hello to Joey LaRobadier. Mm. You want to talk about hard-nosed football watches. When you leave your feet as a football player, you either got to get in the end zone or you got to get the first down. Right here, uh, A.J. Hill jumps over the lineman, and it's just absolutely stonewalled by Joey Lobadier. A uh, really good firm tackle right there to really stop him from gaining any extra yards as he was approaching that first down marker. What a hit by Joey LaRobadier. Good little ball game brewing at Grand Blank High. Davison up. They've got the ball and they've got a third down when you come on back right after this. You might not realize it, but tonight you made a difference. Tonight you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Because even though you just ordered a pizza for dinner, that one little purchase helps make a big difference. For every pizza purchased in the month of October, Hungry Howie's will make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, all on our way to raising $5 million. So this time you didn't just order pizza, you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Hungry Howie's! I said I'd never join. And I wouldn't get to work on one of these! I figured I'd never get out of my hometown. Or be the one who stops an attack. Joining the Navy sounds crazy. Saying never actually is. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Let's go. Welcome back to Grand Blank, everybody. Well, we've got some family ties in the building tonight. Davison starting quarterback Sawyer Glennie is actually, get this, the son of defensive coordinator at Davison, Coach Glennie. Now, you might wonder, how does that happen? Defensive coordinator has a quarterback of a son. Well, when talking to Coach earlier on in the week, he said it really wasn't a surprise. You know, he was coming to practices since he was a little kid, and he just had it. Had a great arm, great spin on the ball, so it was really no surprise to him that he went to the offensive side Side, but just a great uh, story for the Glenny family and for Davidson football as well. Here's the problem here, Kara. What we've got going on is there is a rain falling down. It's not a crazy rain, but it is it is a rain. And I wonder on this play, Grant, if Sawyer Glenny wasn't affected by the rain, he dropped the ball and now Davidson's got a punt again. Yeah, and, and 
keep in mind that when he's trying to do this handoff here, he's coming out, he's reversing out. It's a little bit of a harder handoff. The footwork isn't quite there. And he's running and trying to hand the ball off to number 32, Carter Harriman, who's primarily a short yardage uh, type of back. You know, they're their middle linebacker, the rock on defense there. So the rain probably played an issue too. And then just also, it's a little bit of a harder handoff, uh, one that you spend a little extra time in practice, really crossing your body over, getting that running back to cross your face and, and on a straight plane there. Punt for Davis and Roland. And this will set up Grand Blank inside their 35. Would you believe that this is the worst starting field position for either team so far tonight? Both teams have been kicking ground balls on the kickoffs. And this means that starting field position has been pretty good tonight. Anywho, Grand Blank starts at the 34-yard line, Grant. Their fourth different drive already. Didn't score on the first, scored on the second, didn't score on the third. Why'd they score on the second drive and they didn't score on the other two drives, you think? Well, I think they got to stick to the run, man. The run opened it up, right? They got to find different ways to find different holes, find the leverage on the D-line, right? If they're in over front, run to the three tech and get leverage on his, his positioning. Uh, just different ways to get this running game going. Here's another issue with a handoff. We're going to have to keep an eye on this going forward. Yeah, this is going to play a big role here for both teams. I mean, turnovers are, are you know, hurt anyone on offense, uh, and especially in these rivalry games, it's going to come down to last possessions, who had the ball more, or, you know, who had a better opportunity. Uh, luckily for both these teams here, both fumbles happened in their backfield where, where they were able to, you know, corral the, the, the fumble, get it, and, and land on it. Uh, but going forward here, you know, on these hard tackles with these linebackers, man, there's going to be some, some balls on the ground here. It's just a matter of who falls on them uh, and converts with uh, you know, the turnover that they do get. Fake and a roll for Morrow. He's got his eyes downfield, trying to turn his shoulders, and he's forced to just dirt it. There was nothing on that play. And that's tough. I mean, he's rolling left, and he's trying to hit his receiver in the slot, JT Weber, who's running a, a post corner. Uh, so keep in mind here, you got a guy running far to your left, and you're also rolling left as a righty. That's a hard throw to make. Uh, and, you know, and the defensive line did a fantastic job of applying pressure there. Warren Kane, number two, uh, Tyler Dosh, Jackson Clark there. Uh, you know, and that's a hard throw, but he makes a mature move there, gets as many as he can, and just dirts it uh, and, and lives to see another down. Third down and 12 coming up for Grand Blank. Weber has been the target through the air tonight. He's the guy in the slot with the neon green cleats. He's impossible to miss. Oh my goodness. Morrow caught the snap with one hand, but that's not going to count anyway. There's a flag before the play. Before the snap. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Grant, no football team wants to be in third and 12. They also don't want to be in third and 17. Nope, nope. Those are both losing downs. Uh, your, your, you know, your, your ability to, to convert on these dramatically decreases as your playbook shrinks. Uh, you know, you got to also keep in mind not making any turnovers here as you're in your own territory. Uh, so it, it really gets small here. You know, you try to find maybe a, a pass that has a high percentage completion rate, or you just try to hand it off, help your punt team, uh, and live to see another down, as your defense has been holding up here well uh, with two stops uh, thus far here in, in these third and fourth drives for, for Davison. Down the middle, there's Weber. He's got a ways to go. He's not getting away from Edwards. Fourth down. Fourth down, hit a little you know, crossing route there to JT Weber. Uh, but Jalen Edwards, man, he's roaming the field. He's got his zone coverage area right there. Uh, not much gets past him. Uh, and you can see his brute strength there, grabbed him with one arm and dragged him down. Now, JT Weber isn't the smallest guy, but he's a hard guy to contain. So that's an impressive tackle uh, you know, there for Jalen Edwards. Offense remains on the field. All right, last time they tried to do this pooch punt, it was a poor snap. This time it's better, but the punt is not. I'm just wondering here, right? They've tried to run that pooch punt a couple of times. It's not worked both times. The punter, Ben Thompson, has been kicking off all day. I mean, he's punted the ball 11 times this year. He has a punt of 55 yards, four inside the 20. I'm really curious why that's the punt strategy for Grant Blank. You know, I am too. I mean, you got a good punter in Ben Thompson, number 25. You know, that's his job is to punt, you know, get you good field position to flip it. 
Uh, you saw last time it was a bad snap with a bad, you know, bad kick there by, uh, you know, Jake Maurer. Uh, you know, and then they go back to it, and then they see another, you know, bad kick there, you know, for a gain of four yards maybe on the net punt. So interested to see if they maybe, you know, dial it back a little bit, you know, because when they do line up in that situation, they are looking for the right look, and then they kind of back up into a punt. Uh, interested to see if they just decide, hey, you know what, we're going to punt this thing and flip the field position next time. Glennie keeps room up the middle. First down and more, Sawyer Glenny. Big body lumbering down the field and moving the sticks for Davison. They're going to get back to this, and, and I hope they will because it's been working here early on. They're going to get A.J. Hill here. They're going to run a little power read. Uh, you know, Sawyer Glenn is just reading the defensive end, number 44, Pierre Dukes, and if he runs and attacks that running back, he's taught to keep it up and go inside and take the ball, keep the ball, if you will. Uh, and it opens up holes. These linebackers have to relate to the running back. They have to create other gaps to protect, uh, and it gets great running lanes for Sawyer Glenny. He's run it again at a lane that quickly closed. Man, LaRobadier is just all over the place, isn't he? Yeah, LaRobadier, man, he's a boss on that defense coming into the, uh, this game with 83 tackles. I mean, we were talking about Carter Harriman, uh, but LaRobadier has been putting up numbers as well. 83 tackles with two sacks. Uh, you know, one of the top tacklers in the state of Michigan, according to his head coach. Uh, and, and, you know, I believe him. Uh, he's showing up here early, making firm tackles. A guy that's really just helping this defense uh, stay alive here against this uh, you know, wild attack that, that is, you know, in previous games, putting up no, a number of points here. I mean, 50 versus Flint Carmen Zanesworth, 44 versus South Lyon, 63 for Saginaw, uh, Arthur Valley. Uh, so right now they're doing a good job. They just got to try to, you know, find a turnover or, or make them, you know, uh, have some bad, uh, you know, bad field position here. Keep it again. Lenny sandwiched across that 25 to the 24. He does not have the first down. And here we go, multiple flags. You can get this type of thing in a rivalry game. And you will. I mean, it's and it's usually the second guy you know, that gets involved. I mean, that one was be, you know, between Pierre Dukes and Gavin Brownrig, uh, the right tackle Gavin. Uh, you know, was getting pushed up field a little bit and then gave him one last shove. Uh, we'll see what way this goes. But, uh, you know, that shove then was, you know, accompanied by a little bit of a flop there by Pierre Dukes. But it's usually the second man that gets caught. And that one was Gavin. After the play is over, personal foul, offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Brand, are you saying sometimes players will over-exaggerate to try to get a call? Or is that what you're saying? You know, Evan, that is exactly what I'm saying. And, you know, if it works in your favor, you know, I, I hate to say go ahead and flop. But if you're the, you know, if you're the, you know, the innocent party in that situation, go ahead and give it a little acting job. If it helps your defense there like it did, I mean, they'll take anything, anything they can get. Uh, and that time, you know, Gavin Brownrig just got caught a little bit past the whistle. All right, third down and a mile for Davison after that 15-yard penalty. Lenny dropping back, looking down the field, throwing a spiral incomplete. Hoping for Kokali. That's the guy who caught a touchdown for Davison earlier tonight. This one a little tall. And Anthony Purdue, number nine there on the defense, a rangy safety for this Grand Blake defense, standing at 6'4", about a buck 87. Uh, you know, it is also a fierce in the, in the run game, too. I mean, three interceptions on the year with an accompanied with 46 tackles. Really a guy that just roams that middle of the field and, and finds where the ball's going and makes plays. Sawyer Glenny to punt on the third straight drive for Davison. Grant was just talking about all the great numbers these guys have put up. Glenny's punt off the side of his foot and rolling. Out of bounds at the one. He could not have placed it any better if he ran to the one and threw the ball out of bounds. What a play. Great play there. Really flipped the field position, put them in their own area. Are you considering the U.S. Navy as enlisted or as an officer? Learn about the American Navy and your career opportunities within the U.S. Armed Forces. Contact the local U.S. Navy recruiting office at 734-679-1998. All right, Grant, so this Davison offense that's been so good all year, they have hit a rut. Now, Glennie just bailed them out. Grant Blank is going to have to go 99 yards here if they want to tie the game. But still, prime opportunity here for Grand Blank to really make Davison start sweating. Yeah, and you can take some time off the clock, right? You know, if in this game, if you can keep Sawyer Glennie and those you know offensive attacks off the field, it helps your game. Uh, but they got to get out of this end zone here. Well, they didn't get very much yardage on that play. Big Jaden Lockhart, number 51, 
just suffocated any potential opening space. Yeah, just gave him a big old bear hug there and said, you're not going anywhere, buddy. Uh, really a force on that D-line, plays that, you know, that D-tackle area uh, on the D-line, a big body guy that, you know, just plugs in two gaps, uh, the O-line, a uh, really good job there. And, you know, holes, some holes opened up, uh, but he came and swallowed that one right up. And if you're, you know, if you're Grand Blank here, you got to do everything in your power to play safe. You know, try to get a few yards here and there, uh, but you can't have a turnover or a, a mental mistake here that would hurt you. Steele's got some room. Look at this. Daniel Steele got out of the shadow of his end zone, got a big gain and a first down for Grand Blank. And that's huge. And when you're backed up in your own territory, the old saying goes is you, your goal is to get two first downs. And that's, a, that's an accomplishment as an offense there. And they got one so far, and Daniel Steele, the way he runs, man, is fantastic. I mean, he bounces, but then gets north and south, and then finds another cutback bounce, and then gets north and south. So he's not running laterally for too long. And then once he does find the hole, he gets north and south. Really good job there of getting them out of their end zone and kind of you know giving them a little bit of breathing room uh, here on this uh, you know, next set of downs. Morrow gives, Steele runs across the 25, another solid gain. Grant, every time Daniel Steele is running, I'm thinking of one of those overused football cliches, but honestly, it's true with Steele. At 5'8", 180, he looks like a bowling ball out there. Yeah, he looks like a little Maurice Jones Drew, if you will. I mean, just running through contact, finding lanes to run. Uh, and making something out of nothing at sometimes. I mean, getting through the second level, and this is a linebacker core and Charlie Armstrong and Carter Harriman and Jalen Edwards that have all played together for you know an exponential. I can't speak here a long amount of time, and they do a fantastic job. But Daniel Steele is the, kind of the life beat right now of this uh, Grand Blank offense. That time he's wrapped up in the backfield. Tyler Dosh said enough on that play. Tyler Dosh, another good player for them, defensive end. Uh, you know, is really just a force to be reckoned with. Uh, you know, saw some you know, really important playing time last year. You know, as a returning starter uh, and just kind of controls that line of scrimmage, does a good job of coming flat down the line and chasing that from behind. Uh, you know, because once Daniel Steele gets across that line of scrimmage, he's been getting four, five, six yards of carry, and Tyler Dosh just stops him right in his tracks. Takes a second down and two to a third down and four. Steele on the draw, not going anywhere again. That time it was Armstead for another loss. Good tackle there by Armstead. And then number 76, the left guard there, Miles Lewis, uh, you know, he has to get up onto that second level. He's kind of sitting there in no man's land, and then that linebacker, you know, blitzes, not blitzes, but triggers. He's got to get on him. And if he got, you know, hands on, on, their, uh, on Charlie Armstrong, you know, Daniel Steele would still be running there. But really good job of Charlie Armstrong of getting around that uh, offensive line. Uh, and making that tackle and forcing a punt here. This time, Thompson will punt. The first time he's done it all night, and a good one. Driving Davison back. They'll just let it keep on rolling, and this drive will start right around the 35 for the Cardinals. The Construction Association of Michigan provides a vast resource array of services, information, and training to our diverse membership within Michigan's construction industry. Go to buildwithcam.com for more information. As this drive starts, keep this in mind. Grand Blank is getting the ball to start the second half. So this is one of those drives that feels more important, Grant, right? You got three timeouts for both teams, so Grand Blank may want to use them at some point. And if they get a stop and get the ball back, they can do the old two for one. It's one of those drives that feels a little more important than just any normal drive, you know? Yeah, especially, I mean, if this game ends, you know, 28 to 21, you'll look back and say, well, how did they handle that two-for-one situation? And right here, this is a very important drive for this, uh, you know, Davidson team, but also this Grand Blank team trying to get a two-for-one, like you said here, going into this half. And Davidson will burn their first timeout. Still got a couple in the back pocket. With a lot of the first half to go. Just under five minutes remaining. There's a proud Davison football history brewing under Jake Weingartz, and it all got started in 2019. A banner year led by future Northwestern Wildcat Brendan Sullivan. Davison has a classic overtime win in the semis over Sterling Heights Stevenson at Troy Athens High School and then goes on to beat the Brighton Bulldogs at Ford Field for the first ever state championship 
in school history. That Brighton team had an awesome year as well. They upset Belleville in the semis, but Davison just too much in the D1 State Championship game. And a guy now playing at Evanston, Illinois, made a memory in Detroit. Look, Grant, this year's Davison team kind of feels like that. Big potty quarterback, good running backs, good receivers. But the fact of the matter is their offense has hit a rut. Three straight drives that have ended in, in punts. Yeah, and they got to get something going here. I mean, they came out early in the first drive and hit Brandon Naves. I'd like to see them incorporate him a little bit. We also get this run game with A.J. Hill going. Trying to plow his way up to the 40. And a whole AJ heck of a lot there. A couple of bodies converging to bring him down. Second out of the way. I'm going to make a prediction here. On this drive, uh, You know, if I'm wrong, I'll do 10 push-ups. But I think on this drive, and they're really good at this. They run this really well. They run a fantastic halfback screen, a little slip screen to A.J. Hill. I'd like to see them get that going right. The pressure's been good. They've been running these quarterback jet sweep reads. I'd like to see them incorporate a little bit of a slip screen to get those D linemen asleep. And they've been hitting big on those two this season. So uh, look for them to try to get back to that at some point today. Into a wall again. Nothing on the run for Hill. It is a whole pack of Bobcats converging on that football. And now we will get a timeout. And this Grand Blank D-line is playing fantastic. I mean, really containing these inside runs. Besides the quarterback runs that have hit for you know a couple yards here and there, uh, they've been doing a good job of containing A.J. Hill. Uh, and they also like to get A.J. Hill lined up in the slot on a linebacker body uh, to you know, give a little bit of a mismatch. He's a really good receiver type. Uh, look for them maybe to try to target him here in the slot at the bottom of the screen. Delaney alone in the gun. There you go. Finding a wide open man and a first down. Buddy Banks Williams. You knew they were going to get him the ball eventually. Yep, and that's a name we haven't called a lot yet, but Buddy Banks Williams has been their leading receiver. I mean, 19 catches on the year, uh, north of 340 yards receiving, uh, you know, leads the team with six touchdown receptions. And they got to find ways to get him involved. If the pass game downfield isn't there, look for him to go lateral uh, and incorporate him in the screen game like they did just right, uh, right there. So the drive continues. Davison's got a first down at midfield. They scored on their first two drives. It's been Bupkis since. Miscommunication with Hill. Glennie forced to plow ahead, get what he can. He got a yard and a half. Man, when this great blank Bobcats team makes tackles, they make tackles. They're hitting out there. Yeah, they are. I mean, Joey Lorobadir, you saw his tackle on A.J. Hill. I mean, met him in the hole. I mean, that was a, a movie-type tackle. I mean, A.J. Hill goes to jump, and he just catches him midair, and boom. Those are the goal line tackles you see when guys try to jump over the line of scrimmage there. Uh, but good play, good heads-up play there by Sawyer Glennie. Sees that the handoff's not there and just says, you know what, I'm going to eat it. I'll get north and south, and I'll make this a second and eight. Clock keeps on ticking under three minutes to go in a hotly contested first half. Oh my goodness, Glennie dropped the ball. Grand Blank thinks they've got it. They do. And like we've said before, I mean, these handoffs are going to be the most important things here. they got to secure the handoff. It's starting to get a little wet, not, not a little crazy rain, no monsoon in the area, but a little bit of a damp ball here, and they're just going to try to read it here. And these handoffs get kind of, you know, screwy here when the quarterback says, you know what, I'm going to pull it. A.J. Hill goes to block, is not expecting to keep it, and then they just fumble it again. We've seen this here a couple times early on. That one comes back to bite them in the butt. A rare mistake from Glenny. He has thrown one interception, and he hasn't fumbled all year. But it is rainy. It is cold. It's a mid-October night that kind of feels like middle of November, if we're being honest with you. And let's see if Grand Blanc can take advantage. This looks like the touchdown the Lions had to Laporta. It's working out great for Grand Blanc. That is Anthony Purdue, and that's a touchdown. 
they dialed up just like you said. It looked like the touchdown to Laporta we saw in Detroit a week ago. They're just going to run a little receiver reverse double toss to the Anthony Purdue here. Anthony Purdue was the first guy to touch the ball. He tossed it to JT Weber. Then he tossed it back to Jake Moreau. And then Jake Moreau throws it down the sideline. They don't, they don't account for, for Anthony Purdue running down the sideline. He runs free, wide open, catches the ball, makes a play for them when they need it here late in the second quarter. What a call and what a time to convert there after the fumble. That's when you see big plays there. You know, right after, you know, right after a turnover, you know, they call that a, a, you know, a big play after one of those, you know, those mistakes they make, they catch capitalized man that was huge if it's good enough for ben johnson if it's good enough for kyle shanahan it's good enough for the grand blank bobcats we got a tie game anthony purdue the recipient of that touchdown pass from morrow purdue a member of the really great basketball program here at grand blank state championship a couple of years ago and they only lost in the semis last year because Darius Safecup for Cast Tech was utterly remarkable. Made a banked in three pointer at the buzzer just to send the thing into overtime, and then Grand Blank ends up losing to Cast Tech. Anywho, Anthony's going to make a lot of memories on the, on the basketball court, but so far tonight, Grant Perry, on the football field, Grand Blank was down 14 0. Blink your eyes, this game is tied. The way they've battled back says a lot about this football team. Yeah, they got a lot of heart here. And they've the two losses they've had this season have been out of conference. And they've been fantastic in conference. I mean, dominating everywhere they play, every opponent they play. And they dial up the perfect call there. They catch Davison slipping. And it, it couldn't have asked for a better time uh, for that to come in right before half, trying to get that two-for-one play. Really good job, really good call, great play scheme, uh, and just a fantastic job of executing it too. Thompson to kick it away in what is now a brand new football game. Fielded inside the 30. Kokali on the return and shoved out near the 40. Grant said it earlier, sometimes they try to sell the call. That time he tried to sell the call. Oh boy, here we go. Well, it's not a rivalry game until guys are in each other's chins. Grant and I were on the field before the ball game getting ready to tape the broadcast open. Davison was pretty quiet. Grand Blank wasn't as quiet. i tell you what Grand Blank was saying before the game, but then Grant would have to call the second half by himself. They'd fire me. Some, some choice words. Some, some choice words is the right way to put it. Coming up in the half, Elizabeth Kuhn talks with Sam Mullet from Bear Lake, who became the first female coach in MHSA history to win a football game last week. Congrats, Sam. And Lauren Plant will be in the studio for our Mr. Football and Anvil Awards update and chats with Alan True in the latest recruit report. One of the nominees for the Anvil Award, Carter Harriman, has run for a touchdown tonight for Davison and made a bunch of tackles. This is an undefeated Davison team that really hasn't played a close game since they won in comeback fashion over De La Salle in week one. Boys, you got a battle on your hands tonight. And they got, you know, they came back against De La Salle, but that was on their home turf. They're playing away here in this hostile crowd. So let's see how that plays into, into the into the mix. There's Hughes sitting down in the middle of the zone and making a nice catch right across midfield. Solid gain on first down for Davison. Good job there. And they, talking to Coach Weingarts this week, head coach for for Davison, they said they had loved to mix in some RPOs. They're an RPO heavy team. Right there, they get back to it. We haven't seen it yet. Uh, they've been running the quarterback power read game. Uh, and they go to the RPO game there, and they find the, the Sam linebacker. That's the conflict player, the guy that they're going to throw off of. If he reacts to the run, they're going to throw it. He did. They get a good completion there. Make this a second and, and three. Glenny, quick throw. Low. No Cali was open. He missed him. And he had leverage out there. I mean, you had a blocker uh, for the cornerback, you know, a little bit of better throw there. And I think they would have picked up the first down. And Sawyer Glennie wants that one back. Um, but a good job there. You're seeing them kind of try to attack the, the, the outside, the perimeter a little bit more uh, with some, you know, some high percentage passes, which I think can help them in the long run here. Another third down and another chance for the Grand Blake student section and crowd to make a little noise. Lenny under center. Power football give Harriman. He is in open space. One of the best linebackers in the state of Michigan just ran for his second touchdown tonight. Touchdown. 
power, hard-nosed football. They come in with a 13 personnel. They got three tight ends or fullbacks, whatever you may be, and they just say, hey, we're going to hand it to Carter. Come and stop us here. He just hits the hole 100 miles per hour, and that's a guy I would not want to have to tackle, and he shows his speed there. Burst through the second level, burst through the third level for the touchdown there, and it was too late for Riyad Howard to get a tackle, and that's a big score here to end the half. Well, and there's a lot of bodies and big men running at you. Sometimes you got to make business decisions. That time it turned into six for Davison as the extra point is up and good. 1.39 to go in a first half. And it's had a bunch of swings. That Davison student section is smiling now, Grant. But I do wonder what the response is for Grand Blank. And remember, they'll get the ball to start the second half. Yeah, I mean, you got to imagine they're going to try to you know, come out here and have a good first or second play, try to get something moving. And if they have some success on those early plays, then they try to maybe open it up, you know, stay within their scheme, but you know, try to hit a big play here, maybe get a field goal or some points to go into the second half uh, you know, on a bright note. You, know, you don't want to end on, on a note where Carter Harriman's running all over you. You want to kind of try to erase that a little bit here and it takes some of that momentum back. But you got to also be safe here. You don't want to go down two scores or put yourself in an opportunity to go down two scores going into half. Bounce back for Davison. They had not scored a touchdown since the first half of the first quarter. They've tied it up. Ryder Ferguson back on the field to kick it away. 42-yard field goal he made earlier this year. Let's see how Grand Blank attacks this possession. And let's see where it starts from, frankly. Davison's been squibbing it all night. This one a high hanger. And Grand Blank coming up the field from their five. Couple of slip tackles, but they won't get back to the 20. Lattimore, not a lot of room on the return. So here we go, right? Grand Blank's got the three timeouts, 132 on the clock. In high school, you stop the clock after a first down, so there's a lot of time here. I do wonder, though, how they attack it early in the drive, Grant. What do you think the uh, attack plan will be here? Yeah, you know, and they haven't had much success here offensively. I mean, you know, they had a five-yard, you know, TD pass here when they were in uh, their own red zone, or sorry, in Davidson's red zone area, and then they had a long trick play type, if you will, to Anthony Purdue. So it's the success on the ground and in the air hasn't necessarily been there, uh, but you got to stay true to what you do here. I say you run it with, uh, uh, you know, Daniel Steer here, try to pick up some yards, and then go from there. If you pick up a few, uh, you know, keep going with them. Morrow trying to create magic. He found an open guy down the field. There's Lattimore, just had the return. Man, when you see Jake Morrow roll out of the pocket like that for Grand Blake, you're holding your breath. You're waiting to see if he's got a little magic in that right arm. Yeah, and you can see it, man. And just little instances like that, I mean, that's a hard throw, running to your left, throwing across your body. You know, either you got to plant your feet, turn your hips, and then fire, or you got to kind of give it a jump like he did, cock it, and then just unload. And he does a fantastic job there, picking up seven yards uh, and giving them an opportunity here to, you know, start a little bit of a drive. Fake to steal. Morrow stepping up and falling down. Harriman got to him. Yep, you got to be weary of Harriman. I mean, the kid can flat out play. Versus De La Salle, you know, had 20 tackles. I mean, that's just unheard of. I mean, did anyone else tackle anybody in that game? I don't know. But Carter Harriman is a force, and you got to be aware of where he's at, man. He's going to come find you. Uh, fantastic linebacker for them, and it keeps that to a third and three. Grand Blank's getting the ball to start the second half. In case you're wondering why they're a little content here, even with the three timeouts. Morrow running. Got a long ways to go. And Davison gets to him. And they're going to burn a timeout as Morrow was running for his life. We'll be back right after this. Welcome State Champs Women. Is it your dream to play your favorite sport in college? State Champs Women is dedicated to providing females the equal coverage they deserve while bringing awareness to the gaps in the recruiting process for women. We want you to build a recruiting profile with us. In three easy steps, you can be on your way to finding your dream school and lifelong teammates and friends. Connecting futures, unlocking potential. We are State Champs Women. 
All right, we're back. So here's the situation. Davison just called a timeout because Grand Blank is trying to run out the clock, and now you're forcing them to punt. Oh, by the way, Davison will have one timeout, a chance for her return, Grant. Grand Blank has had trouble with the snap operation on punts all night. Then about 30 seconds to work. This could be a very big swing point of the ballgame. Yeah, and they got some athletes that can get downfield and get open. I mean, we saw earlier Braylon Naves uh, caught a really nice go route on the sideline. Uh, they got guys like Wesley Hughes have caught some passes tonight and Peyton Coakley with the touchdown reception. Uh, and then don't forget A.J. Hill. He's a fantastic receiver out of the backfield. If they get set up here with some good f uh, field position, which I think they will, they'll have an opportunity to take some shots and try to, you know, at the minimum get a field goal. This punt driving Davison back and rolling to a stop inside the 40. So, 26 seconds on the clock in a rainy environment that has affected the game. We've had a couple of fumbles. The added wrinkle, which doesn't always come into play in high school games, Davison's got a pretty good kicker. Ryder Ferguson has made a 42-yard field goal. So, Grant, if they can get to about the 27, 28-yard line, 25, 30 yards here. they got a realistic shot to kick a field goal. Absolutely, and if you're in that huddle right now for Davison, you're hearing, hey, if you get the ball inbounds, you're sprinting back to the line of scrimmage. The, the clock is going to stop momentarily while that first down chain is going to move, and you got to have that next play up, right, Either whether it's a, a spike or a play ready to go. So keep in mind here, you know, the heads-up play, and if Davison can capitalize. The motion co-cality. Roll Glennie to the left. A lot of time being taken up on this play, and he throws it away. Incompletion that killed six seconds. Yep, killed a few seconds there. You know, they were trying to find something on the sideline. You know, smart uh, attack there. You know, you, you know, you don't have much time. You got one timeout. Uh, you know, you're fighting the clock right now. So you're trying to get everything to the sideline, right? Trying to get a catch downfield so you guys can step out of bounds and you guys can have a little bit of time to kind of regroup and get a new play in. Uh, you know, right approach there, uh, but they're running to the left with a right-handed quarterback, so that makes it hard uh, on any thrower uh, going to the left, throwing right. One timeout remaining for Davison. Lenny rolling again, turned his shoulders, found the open man. That's Banks Williams. First down, Davison. Clock stops as they move the chains. Good job there. They're attacking the cover two area, right? In the cover two coverage, you want to attack that, that high low in the corner. And they threw a little bit of a, a corner route. Uh, and a good job there by, by uh, Buddy Williams catching that ball and, and trying to get down as fast as he could. All right, they stop the clock with 10 seconds on this good-looking play for Davison. Let's get another look, Ram. Yep, and they just do a fantastic job of hitting their guy, right? The cornerback's playing the flat area. Safety's playing over top. Where's your area to try to hit? It's right in between that corner and that safety, and they do a good job there by Buddy Williams. Uh, Buddy Banks Williams at that, uh, catching that ball and getting down and giving them another play here. But now as well, right, you got to pay attention because you're out of timeout. So you can't take a sack. You got to work the sidelines. Yes, you call the timeout. Great. Stops the clock. But also, I'm sure in that huddle, they're telling everything we're about to say here. Make sure you are aware of the time, and we don't have any timeouts left. Yep, and this is a situation where you got to you know, instill into your players here, I know you want to fight for extra yards, but we don't have the time. You catch the ball, you get out of bounds, and you try to get back to the line of scrimmage as fast as you can. Uh, you know, In this situation, they either have two plays called or they got one play and a spike, or, and you might not have enough time if you're running these down-the-field kind of concepts. So you got to try to hit something quick to the sideline to give yourself an opportunity either for A, a Hail Mary shot, or B, a field goal uh, with Ryder Ferguson. All right, let's see how Grand Blank defends it and how Davison attacks it. Cardinals trying to get a little bit extra on the board and what has proven to be a fun first half of football. Glenny throws. Flea flicker to the sidelines. He stayed in bounds. He's down inside the five. And you don't have time to spike it. Is... A.J. Hill didn't get out of bounds. He didn't score. Can they clock it?
snap, spike. The referee saying one second on the clock. And the referee saves him here. Usually you need three seconds, but they run a little bit of a hook and ladder here. Buddy Bank Williams is going to catch it and just toss it to the running back coming out of the backfield, A.J. Hill. And he does a fantastic job of getting downfield. But right here, you got to try to get either A out of bounds or try to make Anthony Perdue that safety miss. Really good tackle there in open field. Uh, and if you're Anthony Perdue, a heads-up play there would have been kind of just to hold them up, let that time run down. Uh, but, you know, they got saved there by the refs, giving them a second. Usually it's about three seconds of a buffer. Russell Wilson back at Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl. He went up to try to snap it, didn't have enough time, and the clock ran out. That's a situation in which you got to be prepared for. But Davison gets lucky there and has a second left to play ball. And, oh, by the way, they've got the offense on the field. They do have a kicker who's made a 42-yard field goal this year, but this is a rivalry game. Man, you're talking about an interesting final 20 seconds. We've had a little bit of everything. And did not see the hook and ladder coming. Great call, uh, you know, and then set him up for the score there. As, he's, as A.J. Hill's running down the sideline, you're taught when you have a defender coming right at you and you have minimal space on that sideline, you got to A, either get out of bounds for the time or if you're going to score, you got to get him back straight up, right, to make it look like you're either going to cut back inside or A, give you more room to fit down the sideline. Uh, really good tackle there by Anthony Perdue. And it looks like, you know, uh, Davison's going to play hard-nosed football and try to give it to their, their lead you know, running back today, you know, scoring all the touchdowns in Carter, Carter Harriman. So we'll see what they decide. But you know, at two seconds on the clock, I really thought that thing was going to run off, and they get, you know, they get saved by the, by the whistle there. At uh, Davison student section, A, they have a boom box. B, they have color coordinated. Love it. C, I mean, they've got to recognize that they are just dodging bullets all over the place on this drive. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. And then they, you know, they got to figure out a way to get themselves in the game. I mean, they're doing a good job here. They're up a score, uh, providing a little bit of that amplified here. And, you know, they're also visitors in this stadium as well, um, so their noise has to be heard. Uh, and Davison's feeding off of it. I mean, a really, really good play to end the half there. And, and let's see what they do here. This is hard-nosed football. This is that last drill in practice. You know, mano y mano. You know they're going to probably run it. Can you stop it if you're Grand Blank? And can you put it in if you're Davison? Final play of one heck of a first half. Give Harriman leaping for the goal line. He is in. His third touchdown of the first half. The gamble works for Davison. And they're just going to run here a little bit of an ISO lead just to Carter Harriman saying, hey, you know what? When you get that ball, you find the end zone no matter what. And he just hits his best Superman impression and leaps and just gets that ball across. And, man, he's a great linebacker, a physical guy, but he's limber and he can flex, man. That was a heck of a dive. And way to have a spatial awareness of knowing where you need to get, you know, gaining a few yards and then jumping over your lineman. A good job up front uh, by Hayden Anderson, the center there, and Ronnie Myers, the left guard, and, and Hunter Dunaway, that, that right guard. He's just really paving the way on that play. Extra point up and good for Ferguson. What a close to what a first half between Davison and Grand Blank. I hope you're having as much fun at home watching this game as we are calling this one because there are so many twists and turns. It may as well be some daytime soap. All over the place stuff is happening. And Davison leads by two scores at recess. Grand Blank hustled to the locker room. Davison will get off that field in just a second. One of the finer high school football teams in Michigan being tested on a rainy night. They just scored on the final play from scrimmage of the first half, and their two touchdown lead restored. This Grand Blank cloud has got to feel a little bit uneasy after the way Davison closed that first half remarkably strong. Jake Weingart's the head coach for Davison, one of the best coaches in Michigan. He's standing by with Carol Isles. Coach, touchdown with the one second left in the second quarter. What's going through your mind as you make that call? Well, you know, we had two, two great first drives coming out and then played like played not very well. 
uh, for the rest of the first half. You know, fumbles, personal fouls, just shooting ourselves in the foot offensively. You know, defensively, uh, they are they got a lot of really good playmakers. Um, they got a couple on us, but uh, there at the end of the half, we got lucky on a little hook and ladder there at the end, and we're able to clock it with one second left. Thank goodness the White Hat gave us one second back, and Carter scored, so we just got to put, you know, put a full half together. I mean, we played like not, not very well between the, the first two drives and the last one. What's the mindset going into the second half, Coach? 0-0 zero, zero and not shoot ourselves in the foot. You know, I mean, if we continue to play like we did in the first two drives, it's not going to be a two-score game. So uh, just playing smart, disciplined, and, and doing our job. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Thanks, guys. All right, Davidson leads by two touchdowns. Evan, going to send it back up to you. Uh, thanks. That was a great first half. Davison up by two scores, but uh, you can hear Jake Weingarts, their head coach, not exactly pleased with the first half, even though they're up by two scores. That is a nice luxury to have. We'll hit a break and come on back. Good ball game on a Friday night. Davison leading Grand Blank at halftime. Welcome state champs women. Is it your dream to play your favorite sport in college? State Champs Women is dedicated to providing females the equal coverage they deserve while bringing awareness to the gaps in the recruiting process for women. We want you to build a recruiting profile with us. In three easy steps, you can be on your way to finding your dream school and lifelong teammates and friends. Connecting futures, unlocking potential. We are State Champs Women. You might not realize it, but tonight, you made a difference. Tonight, you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Because even though you just ordered a pizza for dinner, that one little purchase helps make a big difference. For every pizza purchased in the month of October, Hungry Howie's will make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, all on our way to raising $5 million. So this time you didn't just order pizza, you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Hungry Howie's! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common. Officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. All right, hello everyone. My name is Elizabeth Kuhn with State Champs. We're here today with the varsity head football coach for Bear Lake, Coach Sam Mullet. Thanks so much for joining us today. No problem, thanks for having me. This past weekend, you guys had an historic win, the first win of the season, first win in two years, first shutout in Bear Lake history, and you're the first female coach to win a football game in MHSAA history. I mean, what were the emotions like after the game when that clock hit zero? I was actually really calm. Um, the boys were looking at me and making fun of me because I wasn't jumping around or, or doing anything crazy. Um, they were like, aren't, aren't you happy that we won? And I yeah. was like, yeah, but, but we should have won. So, you know, it was, you know, we should have won. So mm -hmm. we did what we were supposed to do. And, and I got excited later when it kind of started sinking in. But um, right in the moment, I was like, Perfect. We, we goal accomplished. Done. What's yeah, next? <laughs> absolutely. And when did it really hit you that I mean, you're making history? You know, I started getting texts from community members. Obviously, my brothers were texting and things like that right after the game. Um, and throughout the game, I always get back to my phone and have, you know, texts from them throughout the game as if I'm looking at my phone. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but when I started to get texts from other people in the community, um, in, in around places that I've met, um, you know, people from Georgia that I've met, um, you know, from my other stops along my coaching career and starting getting texts from other people, it, it kind of started to sink in that this was more than just, you know, me winning a game for, for myself or our mm -hmm. team here or our school, you know, it was, it was bigger than that. Yeah, absolutely. And you talked a little bit about it, but your coaching journey, you've obviously done a lot in your, in your experience so far. You um, were an assistant coach at Bear Lake, spent some time interning for the Ravens and the Buffalo Bills. I mean, can you just walk us through that journey and some of the experiences that you've had? 
Yeah, it's been a wild journey um, and none of it's really been planned or expected, which has kind of been the fun of it um, for me is just seeing where the path goes. Um, and so just as opportunities have popped up, just pushing myself to take advantage of those opportunities and, and seeing what comes of them um, and trying to just really enjoy every stop along the way. Um, so, you know, I was here in Bear Lake for a while and the opportunity came to, you know, jump to the NFL for the summer with the Ravens. Um, and that was quite a quite a big jump going from eight man football with 70 kids in our high school up to, um, you know, we're dressing 70 on an NFL roster. So yeah. um, things were, you know, it's a big jump. It's all football. So mm -hmm. it's all the same. It's all the same. What brought you back to Bear Lake? I mean, what's so special about that community? What really brought you back there? This is my alma mater. Um, I've lived here my whole life. Um, I still live in the house that I remember as my childhood home. Um, the home that I, like the earliest I can remember, I've lived in that house. Um, mm -hmm. And these, the people that taught me in high school are still the people in the building. And just the family aspect of it um, is, is very cool to me. And there's also with our football program, this underdog mentality. What advice would you really give to female coaches in the game of football who, you know, they, if you're, if you're looking to be a female coach, you know, in high school, whatever it is, what advice would you give to them? The biggest thing I would say is be yourself. The boys can really see through when when you're trying to be something that you're not. Um, and they just really want authenticity and they want someone that can help them win. And from the NFL to high school, I've never found anybody that questioned, you know, what I looked like um, or that I'm a female. They just want to know, what are, what are you going to do to help me win? Mm -hmm. um, because ultimately that's the goal at every level, um, you know, is, is how can we be successful? And so I think just being genuine with, with the people and especially the players, um, it helps build that relationship and then they trust you and, and they, they will follow you um, and they're willing to take your direction and your suggestions. But if you're, if you're trying to pretend to be something or, or you're trying to pretend that you know something and you don't, um, mm -hmm. just even being upfront about, hey, I don't know, but let's find out together. Mm -hmm. um, really builds a good relationship um, for a coach, and, and that's really with the foundation of, of a player-coach relationship is that, that trust, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah, and wrapping up this season, you know, what are some of the expectations and hopes for this Bear Lake team? We are hoping to finish strong. Um, mm -hmm. You know, whether it's wins or losses, we are hoping to finish strong. Um, and now that we have a taste of winning, we're mm -hmm. hoping that we can, can keep that momentum going um, even if it's not a win, but keep the, the forward progress going and not make the mistakes that we made in week one or two, mm -hmm. um, you know, to keep pushing forward and, and clean up those things and, and keep the progress going. Um, but yeah, we'd like to obviously win um, the next two games to finish out um, with three wins on the season, but we're looking to just to give it our best effort and to have no regrets. Um, we've been talking that, you know, we're down to seven days with this team and this team will never be together again ever. Just trying to end on a positive note, whatever the scoreboard says. Yeah, absolutely. And what makes this group so special? They, we are down to 10 players, 10 active players right now. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they never complain. Um, we have to run against each other in practice. We have to run a hundred reps of a kid. I mean, the kids get a hundred reps a day at the same mm -hmm. thing because there's not anyone to balance out and we still practice three hours a day. So mm -hmm. for them, it's an advantage that they're getting those reps. But what really makes them special is they don't want to quit. They, you know, we had a game a couple weeks ago where we we hit that, we dropped, we had started the game with 13 or so people and, and we dropped down to um, like 10 players in that in that moment. Um, and the ref came over and he's like, you know, it's it's my job to keep your, your players safe. You mm -hmm. want to end the game now because you're down to this few of players and I said no no way sir um there'd be a mutiny um they would be they would be throwing me out and they'd say we're <laughs> yeah. playing without our coach he said we're quitting yeah. um so you know and it wasn't an unsafe situation for mm -hmm. them to be in it was an even match up physically mm -hmm. um but yeah I mean they don't want to quit for anything we've been down um in on the score several times this year and come back and taken the lead um we didn't obviously finish on top of those games but for us to be able to go down 20 or 30 points and battle back from that has been really incredible to watch. They just don't quit for anything. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so, so much, Coach. We are looking forward to seeing you guys play the rest of the season. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah and congratulations.
What's up, Michigan? Welcome back inside the State Champ Sports Network studio. Hey, for the love of pizza, all month long, we're talking Mr. Football, we're talking Hungry Howie's. Every pizza you buy, a portion, a donation will go to breast cancer. And of course, here to talk about another update in our State Champs Mr. Football race presented by Hungry Howie. Sean Belisian, how are you, my man? Uh, tremendous. I'm looking forward to some Cajun crust myself. Another big week all around the state and some big games. And Lauren, I'll tell you what, this is difficult. Our top 10 is difficult because there are so many good players knock, knock, knocking on that door. But you know, at this point in time, who do we take out? Right. That's something that we're going to be talking about in the next week. There's no doubt. We've only got a few more weeks to make some changes before that list is set in stone and we see how they do in the playoffs, and then we'll see who makes it into the final four. Let's talk about who we want to talk about this week. This is a guy who literally can probably play outside of the line, any position uh, on the field, and he's a young guy. He's one of the most highly recruited players in the country, and right now is under center for a cast tech team that outside of the first couple of losses have not lost since September. Yeah, they have been on fire. Five straight, they are rolling. And Lauren, for the sake of an argument, because the kid is so incredibly talented, we're going to call sophomore C.J. Sadler an athlete because that's what he is. He can do a little bit of everything. As I mentioned, Lauren, five straight by Cast Tech right now, and a big part of this turnaround is this sophomore. And, you know, we talk so much about highly recruited athlete. It's part of our process. Lauren, you and I were just talking about it off the air. The last few years, it is amazing how many guys are being recruited by everybody. And this is a kid, CJ Sadler's a kid, that make no mistake about it, he is being recruited by everybody. If you don't believe me, all you have to do is check out his Twitter profile. Check out all the different places where you see things. There he is with Coach Prime. There he is getting a an offer from this school, from that school, but he's a guy that can do a little bit of everything. And let me remind you, the kid is only a sophomore. So not only does he have incredible chapters to write this year, but he's got chapters to write next year and the year beyond. CJ Sadler is another reason why the secret is out. There are athletes here in the state of Michigan, and you're seeing guys from schools come into this state from all over the country because of fantastic players like C.J. Sadler. So like I said, Lauren, when, when you talk about our top 10 list, okay, you can make a strong case for every single one of these guys. It's going to be tough to break through, and certainly C.J. Sadler is a guy that belongs on there. StateChampsNetwork.com. Click on Contest and the Mr. Football tab. Hey, what's up, Michigan? It's another round of the State Champs Recruit Report presented by Lawrence Technological University. You know, you could satisfy your curiosity by checking out everything Lawrence Tech has to offer at an upcoming visit day. You can make magic and literally change the world. There are two dates coming up, Saturday, November 18th and Saturday, December 9th. Both events start at 10 a.m. All you need to do, it's totally free. Go to ltu.edu, click on admissions, and then events. We're joined each and every week by 24-7 Sports' Alan True, who makes it his business to know a ton of what's happening in Midwest high school football recruiting. Now, we focus on the news affecting high school football players here in the state of Michigan for this show. And Alan, it's always great to see you. Always great to see you. I can't believe we are. I'm looking at playoff schedules already here and trying to figure out where I might be in a couple weeks, but it's gone quickly. Let's start in Hazlitt this week. There are a pair of Amakari brothers that play for the Vikings. The older sibling and the senior Nakai is committed to Bowling Green. What's up with younger brother Corey? Yeah, Corey uh, was one of several Michigan kids who visited Louisville last weekend, and he was one of the ones that came away with an offer. The Cardinals have made an effort to recruit Michigan. Uh, very hard uh, in this last cycle, but even going back to getting guys like Desmond Fitzpatrick, they've always come into Michigan a little bit. So Corey picks up an offer from them that is his first ACC offer. He's only a 2026, 20, but he's going to get quite a few more. I mean, he's 190 pounds. He runs low 11s in the 100 meter dash. Would expect him to go faster this year. 4-4 guy in the 43-9-8 shuttle catches the ball extremely well out of the backfield. So. He's double-digit offers right now, but I still think some of the big boys uh, are going to come over the course of the next two years. Very, very talented young prospect. 
Yeah, right on. Hazlitt four and three on the season. We'll see if they make a playoff push. We now head to the MAC Red and Macomb, Dakota's Justin Bell. He is a pancake machine. Big, big offensive lineman. Yeah, picked up his first offer from Eastern Michigan not too long ago. Was on their campus, visited them, visited Michigan. Michigan has not offered yet, but they are showing interest. And schools are seeing the development in him. When we first saw him as a prospect, he was about six foot six. 220 pounds on the light side. He's now six foot eight, 265 pounds, and still has a ton of room to grow. You still see him. He's, he's a lot of arms and legs. And so I think schools are seeing uh, the potential for him to easily pack on the weight and be a, a monstrous college offensive tackle prospect. You mentioned the pancake machine. He plays physically at that size. So as he gets bigger and stronger, that's going to be a scary proposition for his opponent. So Eastern Michigan in early. But just like we just said with Corey Amakri, I would not think that Eastern Michigan will be the last offer because 6'8", 265 with some tenacity just doesn't grow on trees. All right, well, let's wrap it up with some news from the West Side. Our number 19 ranked team in the state, Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central, 6-1 and one on the year. And there is news regarding the athlete that is Maxwell Richardson, despite his commitment. Yeah, he's a junior who's committed to Stanford, committed to them in the summer. But the last couple of weeks, the Big Ten schools have come calling and he's taken visits to Michigan and Wisconsin. At this point, neither of those schools have offered, but he's at least listening to them and taking a look while maintaining his commitment to Stanford. He just uh, retweeted something about uh, their academics. I know that's a big deal for him. He's got over a 4.1 GPA in the classroom. But also a classic kind of Big Ten type linebacker at six foot three, 215 pounds. And so I think as he's had a great season, the Rangers have had a great season. Some of these other schools have continued to kick the tires on him. Still firmly committed to Stanford, uh, still excited about that. But I think at least ears are open and, and willing to go and take a couple of Big Ten visits during this fall. So I think that's notable if you follow Big Ten recruiting that uh, Max is committed to out to the Pac-12 school, but still Taking a look here with the Wolverines and Badgers. You can follow Alan True on X, formerly known as Twitter, A-L-L-E-N-T-R-I-E-U. Check out all of his work at 247sports.com. Now, before I let you go, now that we're just a few short months away from the early signing day, is it typical now for you that things are really going to get frenetic from here on out in terms of offers? Yeah, I think offers and potentially seniors taking another look. Uh, mm -hmm. As the college season winds down, you may have coaches moving uh, locations, right. changing jobs, and that will certainly have a lot to do with kids taking another look. You get uh, your official visits, and uh, now there isn't a limit on that. So some of these guys who have been committed for a while can take official visits after the season. So yes, I would say we're reaching the point where it starts to get a lot more fast paced. Uh, if teams get eliminated from the playoffs, then those kids on those teams can start focusing more on recruiting. So November into December is a very, very busy time in the recruiting world. Right on. And we'll talk about it right here on the Recruit Report. So, Alan, again, thanks for your time. We'll see you next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. What's up, Michigan? Welcome back inside the State Champs Sports Network Studios. Time for another update in the State Champs Lord Here with the coach, Tim Beckler. And um, coach, this is a great month because this award is presented by Hungry Howie's. They call it Love, Hope, and Pizza. Every pizza you buy at Hungry Howie's for the entire month, they'll make a donation to the Breast Cancer Foundation. So that's why you see the pink boxes, and that's why you see a lot of pink games and things that go on, a lot of rallying around the breast cancer cause. Uh, so that's an awesome thing. Welcome back into the show. Thank you. All right, so let's get into it. We uh, had two new guys go into the competition, the Anvil Award competition for the best lineman or linebacker in the state. And so last week, uh, we talked about one new guy. We have another one uh, that we're going to break down today. Uh, Scott Bernstein calls him the Pancake King of Oakland County. His name is Liam Vaughn. He is 6'2", a junior offensive lineman uh, playing for the undefeated Walt Lake Western Warriors. Yeah, Scott's not lying. Uh, I love this kid. Uh, He's a road grader. He's a soul taker. He doesn't just want to block you. He wants to dominate you. And uh, he's mean. He's nasty. As a run blocker, he's an athlete. Yeah. They run a lot of outside zone, and he reaches and runs people down. He gets to the second level. And 
he just knocks people down. I mean, he is aggressive, and he likes to land on them and let them know about it, too. Uh, love this kid. Great pass uh, blocker, too. He's got a great snap-down technique. Knocks people down when he's uh, pass blocking, too. He's just a dominant player. He does get some reps at D-tackle, too, and he's got a great motor. I mean, he runs to the football no matter where it is, and he's basically unblockable. I mean, he breaks through double teams and, and, and makes plays. He's phenomenal player. We just uh, put him into the competition last week and guess what? He's already leading the vote. So uh, good on the Wald Lake Western family. 44% uh, of the vote right now is in the category for Liam Vaughn. So right now he cannot be removed from the race no matter what we say moving forward. He is the leading vote getter. He is the guy if this continues through the playoffs will be automatically in the final four. Now there are other guys that are still uh, getting some votes out there Carter Harriman from Davison is still getting some good votes. Uh, Stone Chaney, who just went in, has got some votes. So you can do it too. Go to statechampsnetwork.com, vote, and vote often. We'll be back next week with another update. You might not realize it, but tonight you made a difference. Tonight you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Because even though you just ordered a pizza for dinner, that one little purchase helps make a big difference. For every pizza purchased in the month of October, Hungry Howie's will make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, all on our way to raising $5 million. So this time you didn't just order pizza. You ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Hungry Howie's! Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common. Officials. Every game. Every meet every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Bogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. All right, we're back. Davison leading Grand Blank 28-14 as we prepare to start the second half. But Grant, that was one of those deals where honestly this ball game looks a lot closer than the score. Davison in a wild sequence to end the first half runs a hook and ladder from their own 40. They get to the one yard line. They manage to stop the clock with a spike with one second and then they score a touchdown with no time left on the clock to end the first half. So a pivotal sequence specifically because Grand Blanks had got about to get the ball as we start this second half. Yeah, really, really fun and exciting ending to that half. I mean, you know, uh, Davidson got some calls there at the end with the seconds uh, left on the clock, able to put it in, uh, you know, late there to take a two-score lead. Looks like it was going to end at a one-score lead uh, for Davidson. Uh, but, you know, Grand Blanks getting the ball here to start the second half. Uh, so we'll see what they come out with. All right, let's go down to the sidelines in the third round of our crew. Carol Isle standing by. Yeah, th thanks, Evan. Well, I got to talk to Grand Blank head coach, Coach Four, before this quarter started, and he said, you know what, what we really need to do is just take care of the football and finish when we have that opportunity. But I'm going to tell you guys right now, it is hype on this uh, sideline down here. They're ready, and just expect a good second half. Uh, it's fire They're fired up down here, that's for sure. Kara, appreciate you. Grant, what do you make out of the fact that Grand Blank, it seems like they're still pretty confident even though they're down two scores here as we start the third quarter. You know, it helps to have this, this light show going on at your home place, having the crowd behind you here, you know, the crowd sticking in it, you know, light rain, uh, nothing to, you know, make the crowd run away. Uh, but, you know, you got to be, you know, somewhat happy with how that, you know, that, that first half went. I mean, you, you're down two scores, but it feels like you're only down one, but you're getting the ball to start. Uh, the opportunities are really endless. I mean, five punts in the first half there. you got to kind of capitalize on some of those. Uh, they did have two touchdowns. Uh, they just got to put themselves in a better place uh, to succeed here in the second half and, and try to really, you know, get this to a one-score game here as soon as possible. Ryder Ferguson to kick it away again. And the second half underway. 
Uh, neither Grand Blank Bobcat could decide who was going to catch the ball, so it ends up going into the end zone for a touchback. Two touchdowns scored tonight by Grand Blank. Both passing. Morrow found Aaron Jones on their second drive of the game, and then later on, on basically the same exact play that the Lions ran, that flea flicker touchdown to Sam Laporta back on last Sunday afternoon, Grand Blank run it for six. So, Grant, I'm curious here. Starting the third quarter, entire second half to go, but two quarters remaining in a two-score game. How do you think Grand Blank's attacking it here offensively? You've know, you got to stick within your scheme. I mean, you got to keep the running game going. Daniel Steele, uh, you know, while this is still a two-score game and you're still in this with a lot of time left, you know, establish the run. Uh, that helps your pass game, and you got to try to find ways to get guys on the edge, uh, kind of like JT Weber is here. Getting one of their best athletes in space, making it work. Across the 30 he goes. First down, Grand Blank. Davison finishes the tackle, and Weber's flex it after this play. A good play here. They fake to the running back, and they just do a little toss pass uh, to JT Weber, getting their elusive playmaker, uh, coined Tyreek Hill from their head coach, uh, who is you know very shifty and elusive. I want to see him get him in more open space, let him make some plays downfield. Uh, but they're finding ways to get him involved, and they're just waiting for him to, to squirt one here and make a big play and really get this crowd into it. It's a crowd that has remained despite the fact that the weather stinks. It's raining and it's cold. Steal up the middle. Brought down hard by Jalen Edwards, but he did get across the 40 and gained eight on first down. Did a really good job there. I mean, that hole opened up and Daniel still ran through it. Left tackle there, Jack Stewart had a really good block on the defensive end. Uh, and then a really good tackle, firm, hard tackle there by Jalen Edwards, uh, who's just another linebacker that, that for this defense is so uh, you know crucial to their success, uh, You know, finding ways to get involved. And uh, he's had a good night so far and expect him to continue that here in the second half. First drive of the second half and Grand Blank's moving. Fake to steal. Morrow's got the time, and he's throwing it in completion. JT Weber had the worst thing happen for a wide receiver. Too much time. Yeah, too much time, too much open space. Uh, that is one of his strengths, is finding those open, vacated zones in those zone coverages. That time, you know, just way too open. You know, just thinking about the run after catch. Uh, but, you know, job number one of a receiver is to catch it, then run. Uh, and he just, you know, had those backwards. There's a flag as well. Looks like a legal motion on Grand Blank. Here's your call. Illegal chip on the offense. Five yard penalty from the previous spot. Still second down. So Davison will take the penalty, electing to make it second down seven instead of third down two. Which I think is a smart call. I mean, third down and two, you, you know, your playbook's kind of open. Second down and seven defenses will give an opportunity to either push them back a little bit further or make it, you know, a second down and seven as well. Or third down, excuse me. Give to Steele, gets a lot of those yards back, plunges across the 40. They give him the 40, and third down on the way. It looks like that penalty you know, paid off. You know, they're going to be faced uh, with here with a third and five rather than that third and two to three where they were facing there. Uh, so good call there by the, by the head coach and, and uh, you know, Jake Weingarts, uh, you know, pushing them back a little bit and putting them in a situation here where you know, five yards, it may seem obtainable. But tonight, I mean, five punts, uh, you know, kind of just stalling out in these drives. Uh, you, know, you like your chances as a defense here in these situations. What can Grand Blank draw up? They keep it with Morrow, who does not have the first down. This is the two yard to go gain scenario they thought they were gonna have on third down. Instead, it's fourth down. And let's see what Grand Blank's decision is. I think they're gonna probably jump in to check with me here. If they don't run the punt team on, they're gonna kind of line up here, see if they like you know something, that, you know, whether the line is, is in a different front than usual. And if they like it, they're gonna get the green light, throw in a call here and, and tell their guys, hey, we got two yards, go get it. Couple of times tonight, they've tried to punt Jake Morrow, the quarterback, and neither punt has gone 10 yards. They'll go for it. Morrow to the boundary. Did he get enough? The initial spot is yes.
Wow, the official on the far side was marking that ball at the 45. The official on the near side has already said it's Davison football. That's what the Grand Blank coaching staff is saying. Look at your guy on the other side of the field. Yeah, other guy in the field, you know, had a little bit of a farther angle. You know, the guy closest, excuse me, the stripes, the ref closest has that say, has that ability to override the call there. Uh, and in his eyes, it looks like Davison got to stop. All right, well, the gamble for Grand Blank didn't work out, and Davison, again, is starting an excellent field position. Look, hindsight's 20-20, Grant. Did you like that decision for Grand Blank to go for it? You know, you got to set the tone here coming out. Uh, I, I, I do like the situation in which they were in. They had the opportunity to succeed there. They had a really good lead block there by number 24, Daniel Steele, leading the way. Uh, and that's just a little bit of the, where that sophomore uh, you know, mentality has to you know, take a next step, right? And if you're Jake Morrow, and really just stay in bounds and fight for that extra yard to leave no doubt. Glenny on the move. There's been a lot of real estate when Sawyers wanted to run the ball. Gain a nine on first down up to the 35. Yeah, but back to what you're saying, I mean, it, it is a gamble there in that situation. And, and you'd like to have the crowd behind you on there, and they did. Uh, but the, the ref near, uh, closest to the place, you know, called them short. And unfortunately there, you know, the gamble didn't pay off, uh, which could have really been a tone setter. But here, you know, hopefully the defense can get a stop because this could be a crucial drive here for Davison if they go down and put some points up. They motion Hill out of the backfield. And now the motioning banks. Williams, a fake. Wide open man missed him. All that pre-snap commotion nearly led to a walk-in touchdown for Hill. And they bring two motions here. They, they send the running back out wide, uh, you know, kind of alerting the defense. Hey, the running back's out wide. Watch for the pass concept. But then they bring that another jet motion type player in Buddy, uh, you know, Buddy Banks there. Buddy Banks Williams comes across, really gets everyone's attention on him, and they run a little play action pass off that. A.J. Hill was screaming wide open for a touchdown. And, and uncanny of Sawyer there to miss. Uh, you know, that's a throw he usually makes. Still, though, not a bad shot to take that shot. You still got third down short here. Give Hill. First down, Davison. Still going. Tackled at the 31. And they'll live in that third down situation all day. I mean, really, like you said, good call there on second down and one. Um, you know, that's really the, the ideal time to throw that play action, that deep shot uh, in your repertoire. Uh, you know, because the defense is thinking, hey, it's second and short. We got to, you know, protect the inside gaps. We got to get ready to come up. Uh, and then they blow right by him for what would have been a touchdown pass, an easy completion if you put a little bit more air on it. Uh, but then it leaves you with that third down and one in which they convert with A.J. Hill. Clock keeps on ticking toward eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Grand Blank just went for it on a fourth down and two in their own territory, didn't get it. That's why Davison had great starting field position. Glenny off the fake and a flag cancels the play. Before the play, dead ball, false start, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. That goes back to what Jake Weingartz was telling Kara coming off the field. Yeah, they're winning, but honestly, with mistakes like that, pre-step penalties, not really happy with the way his team's executed. Yeah, and you know this is a team that you know has you know come into this game seven and 5 and zero in conference play, and they're not you know undefeated for you know any particular reason besides the fact that they play good ball and they've been dominating each game, uh, and it's very unlike uh, you know them to have these penalties that have put them in a situation in which they find themselves in a tough dogfight. Uh, so their coach wants the best for them and they wants them to limit the penalties. Glenny throwing a strike. Buddy Banks, Williams, first down, Davison. Inside the red zone they go. They're just going to run a high-low concept here, a little smash concept, if you will. They're going to run a guy to the flat, and they're going to run Buddy Banks Williams to the corner route. Uh, you know, going against cover two, you got a high safety in, in Anthony Purdue that's roaming half the field deep. Uh, and your, your aerial weakness is on that sideline in that you know 15 to 20 yard range in between that corner and the safety. You know, it, it's not the first time we've seen it. They had a good completion there uh, in last uh, their last drive to end the you know, the first half. Uh, and they came back to it, uh, and it's going to be there too if, if uh, you know, Graham Blake stays in that uh, cover two shell. Lenny rolls, throws, catch, 
made. Awfully close to another first down. Poor Braylon Naves was somersaulted on the tackle. Made a tough catch. Mm -hmm. Tough catch, I mean, but found the open zone. Really good job of just settling your feet, giving eyes and hands to the quarterback, saying, hey, I'm here, I'm open. Uh, you know, good completion. It almost gets in the end zone, uh, but Riyad Howard there comes and flips them and, and lets them know, hey, if you're going to catch it in my zone, you're going to feel it. Uh, you know, so a good tackle there. Keeping them out of the end zone. Uh, but, you know, albeit they're sitting here at a first and goal, uh, or second and one here uh, on their own, you know, in, in uh, Grand Blanks territory. This is the formation they scored on the final play of the first half. Give Harriman. He is not in. Got the first down, took another hit. That's usually a guy on defense lower in the boom. Here the boom gets lowered on him. Yeah, they're going to go back to Carter Harriman here. He's going to bounce off the tackle here. And then Demarion Chapman comes in and says, you know what, you're a big hard runner, but I can lay some wood too. Uh, you know, Carter Harriman's getting dragged down by a couple defenders. And that's when you have a clean shot to really come in and clean up the tackle there. And a good job there by uh, number zero, Demarion Chapman, uh, making sure he doesn't cross that goal line. But picks up the first down in the process, and they're sitting here you know, with one yard to go and four tries at it. A touchdown would mean Davison's got their largest lead of the night. Do they give it back to Harriman? Nope, they'll sneak Glenny. Looking like Jalen Hurts. That's a Davison touchdown and a 20-point lead. They just gave Carter Harriman the run. He got kind of blown up on that last play, so they said, you know what, sorry, Glennie, go ahead and you know, lean in there and give us your best uh, Hurts push uh, impersonation. Does a good job of getting in there. Uh, you know, and QB sneaks are harder than they look, right? you got to find that open gap and really get in there and penetrate and get that yard uh, that the defense is fighting so hard to hold you back from. Uh, but, you know, Sawyer Glenny uh, won't be denied, and that's his, uh, you know, his second rushing touchdown of the season. Extra point for Ferguson. Up and good. 20. One point lead for Davison, largest of the Knights. Alta Equipment knows when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alta Equipment partners with the biggest names in construction with industry leading service and support. You can give them a call at 844 go to Alta. This is where the math of the game. Grant gets longer for Grand Blank. There's still over half the third quarter to go, but because you don't score and Davison does to start, right? Now it becomes we got to get a bunch of stops and scores here to make a game of it. To state the obvious, it's a really important drive for Grand Blank. Yeah, really important drive. They got to come out here and really just establish you know what they do best, finding you know, ways to get JT Weber involved here on the perimeter, uh, but also incorporating the run. You still got a little bit of time here that you can you know rely on the run game for those crucial yards you need to pick up. Uh, but you know, like you said, I mean, every drive here, every touch, every second matters. And if you're Grand Blank, you're trying to prioritize what's our you know most effective plays, what gets us the most yards, but you know saves them the most amount of time. That man, Ryder Ferguson, has been busy tonight. Sophomore kicker has been using the right foot a lot. Kick here, drives Weber back. He's got to return it. Does he have a little magic? Keeps the legs going, spinning across the 25. And Grand Blank will start at the 26. So the two touchdown passes tonight for Jake Morrow, that means not 17 on the season. I mean, Daniel Steele, that's been the recipe for them, running the football. Again, you go back to the math of the game. You've still got time to run the ball and go score. That's the most important thing here, Grant. But Grand Blank also would not hate if they score and do it as quickly as possible on this draft too. Yep, you gotta you know find your best plays, run them to the best of your ability here. You know, get as much as you can. Um, you know, when you can, you know, try to get out of bounds or try to you know get you know to get the first down that you know stops the the clock for a little bit while those chains moves. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, you gotta move it forward. They're taking a shot. Morrow down the field, incomplete. Tried to find the running back steal. Playing wide receiver on that play. They went empty set there, trying to get a you know a linebacker or a safety on a running back. Uh, Matchups that offenses usually like there, try to run him up the seam. Uh, he was running up uh, you know against Cortez Porter, who's had a good game so far. You know coming into this game, he's got four pass deflections, uh, so really an active active uh, you know player for them in, their, in Davidson secondary. Um, and they weren't fooled on that one. Good coverage and, and just you know overthrow, and you really couldn't you know get to that one uh, if you're Daniel Steele. 
Makes it second down and 10 for Grand Blank. Morrow dropping back. Throws a strike. First down, Grand Blank. And more. They're still on their feet. Across midfield they go. Matthew Evans, his first catch of the night. A good looking one. And those are plays that you got to succeed on, man. They, they run a perfect curl flat concept over here to the field. They find that open vacated zone window. Morrow's just going to drop back, wait for his target to get open. He had the flat route wide away, but he knows, hey, this curl route's coming. Sits, takes one hitch, throws a dime, dime in there to, to Matthew Evans, number 21, who then makes a couple tacklers miss. Very unlike uh, number 10, Jalen Edwards, of missing tackles. So when you do, you got to get those yards. And they do a fantastic job there of moving the sticks and getting it into Davison territory. They're trying to run the exact same play. Does it work as well? Oh, this one worked too. It's not a touchdown, but it is a completed catch. Aaron Jones brought it in. Officials talking on the sidelines. They rule the catch. Let's get another look. Yeah, really good job here. They run the kind of the same play, but they're going to run a post-wheel combination. Everyone takes the post, and then Jalen Edwards is a little bit late on defending the wheel there from the tight end. Uh, and that tight end was number 95, Aaron Jones, the guy that has that touchdown pass reception in the first half. A uh, really good concept there of uh, mirroring it up, making it look like that same play, but sneaking that tight end down the sideline. Uh, right now they're having a good drive here, and they got to sustain this thing and end with some points uh, in order to get back in this one. Grand Blank on the move. Weber ran into one of his linemen, lost a yard. Looked like he ran into Miles Lewis. And they're just going to run there. It's a little bit of a, it looks like it's going to be a, you know, a halfback outside zone, but then it's a counter flip to JT uh, Weber there. Uh, good job there. But, you know, ran into Tyler Dosh, number 15. Uh, he's a guy that plays really slow and controlled off the edge. You know, when he sees those run plays coming to him or those read option, he plays nice and slow. Does a fantastic job of blowing up that play. And we got a timeout on the field. Davison burns their first time out of the half with 4.57 remaining in the third quarter. You know, there are some outstanding athletes from this greater Flint area. And uh, this guy was pretty good. Mark Ingram went on to win the Heisman as a member of the Crimson Tide of Alabama. I'm contractually obligated to call him that. Running all around the yard, around these parts. And eventually, Mark would go on to play and win a Heisman Trophy at Alabama. Oh, by the way, he'd go on to have a pretty darn good NFL career as well. I think I can freely admit, Grant, that Mark Ingram was on several of my fantasy football teams over the years. Spent his first three years at Grand Blank. Then he went to Flint Southwestern for his senior year in 2007. John Kidd wants to make sure you know that Mark Ingram's going to be on that Fox Big Noon kickoff show before Michigan inevitably beats poor Indiana tomorrow. Yep, he's on there. It's fun seeing him on there. He brings a little bit of a life to that, that broadcasting team with Matt Leiner, Reggie Bush, uh, a couple other guys on that on that you know, broadcasting team that you know you wake up your Saturday morning and you, know, you enjoy watching them you know, talk ball and figure out the matchups of the day. Uh, Mark Ingram's got one heck of a personality too, man, so he's, uh, he's a fun guy to listen to. You should see the smile on Grant Perry's face when I said Michigan inevitably will beat Indiana. My brother went to Indiana, okay? I get it. Michigan's good, but let the Hoosiers hang around tomorrow, you know? Maybe a quarter or two, but hopefully it's that long. Direct snap to Weber, running left, and he's tackled in the open field. Nice job, Chuck Armstead. Fantastic job there by Chuck Armstead. Uh, just... You know, another one of these linebackers that just finds the ball and then tackles it. Uh, you know, his third on the team in tackles per game was six, uh, you know, about six and a half uh, average per game. So he's doing a fantastic job this year. Uh, really, uh, just, uh, you know, you can't find a weakness in this linebacker core at all. I mean, from Chuck Armstead to Carter Harriman and to Jalen Edwards, I mean, those guys, you know, this is one of the best linebacker uh, groups that we've had the privilege to watch and also, you know, all of the state, I'd have to say. Third down, long way to go. Another whistle and another Davison timeout. Davison, is her second and a half. Well, if they need uh, timeouts later in the game, Davison is going to be behind the eight ball. They've just burned two within the last three plays. Third down 13 for Grand Blank coming up here. We've had the chance these last few weeks to tell you about all the great programs, 
not just the football programs we've been covering. Davison's wrestling program has a dynasty brewing. They've won 10 straight state championships. They won back-to-back -back state championships in 2021 and 2022. Some state championships over the Shamrocks of Detroit Catholic Central during that time. Detroit Catholic Central has kind of had a stranglehold on wrestling at the Division I level in the state of Michigan for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. The school that is consistently their kryptonite, and give credit to them, Davison has a heck of a wrestling program. And oh, by the way, a lot of those wrestlers also play on the football team. Yeah, and those wrestlers make great football players. I've had the chance since football is over for me. I've done a little jujitsu, and I've gone against some former wrestlers. And man, those are not guys you want to wrestle with. I mean, they are just so strong. They know leverage. They know angles, which really helps them in the game of football as well. Third down long. Morrow's got the time, and he's throwing a gorgeous ball. That's a touchdown. The second catch of the drive for Matthew Evans, and Grand Blank is alive. I mean, when you need it most, you know, Jake Morrow comes through for you here. Just a little bit of a drop back pass, they run a little run action here. They had JT Weber over the middle, kind of holding that safety, and then they just had inside leverage on the post. Matthew Evans beats Cortez Porter for the post route, catches it, secures it, clean catch. No, no doubts about it. His second catch, like you said, this drive uh, couldn't have come at a more pivotal moment on this drive to get them back into this game. Man, I know the score is what it is, but if you've been watching this entire ball game like we have, how can you not be impressed with the sophomore quarterback, Jake Morrow? He's just throwing it all around the yard. Yeah, I mean, it just it doesn't look like a sophomore. Just really composed, not making ill-advised throws. I mean, when he's outside the pocket, it has an understanding of when to throw it away and when to give your guys a chance. Uh, and it goes to show just, you know, what kind of success he's had this season and also, you know, the years to come, you know, with the, the youth of his, uh, his age. Dakota Glassdetter knocks in the PAT. And as we take a break, we got a ball game again. Davison getting the ball after this. Did you know you can reach a large family audience through high school athletics? State Champs Network has recorded the journey of high school student athletes for over 20 years. The successful Game Time Live during football season is sold out. Opportunities are now available for the winter sports season, including Game Time Live for boys and girls basketball, hockey, and possibly cheerleading. Are you interested in getting your brand in front of a passionate and targeted audience? Please reach out to John Watson from our sales team for more information at jwatson at statechampsnetwork.com. All right, we're back at Grand Blank High. Bobcats hanging around. Morrow just threw a touchdown to Matthew Evans on third down and 13 to make it 35-21 again. As the rain picks up again, and they play shipping up to Boston by the Dropkick Murphys. I'll say it once, I'll never say it again. I don't know why you're allowed to play this song not in Boston. This is not Boston. Anywho. Davison on the return. Looking for real estate. Not going to find it, not going to reach the 30. Nice job by Grand Blake Special Teams. Well, let's see if you know that touchdown can instill some life into this defense. And, and you know, a stop here would be really crucial. Uh, looks like uh, you know Grand Blanks found a little momentum offensively with Jake Morrow throwing the ball, finding the target, and Matthew Evans, who's kind of stepped up here in this second half early on. Uh, you know, a little bit of a spark, and defense can really add to that fire here with a stop or a turnover. Do you have any thoughts, in my opinion, that shipping up to Boston should not be played anywhere but New England? You know. Uh, Fair, fair thoughts there. Uh, fantastic song, though. You know, how can you, you know, withhold that from the rest of the country? You know, just a, a real song that gets you going. It makes you just want to start stomping your feet a little bit. You're such a good politician, dude. You know, just playing all sides of the field. God bless you. Sawyer Glennie rolling away, motioning downfield, throwing in completes. He missed Naves. Miss Naves, they had some deep routes there, you know, at the top of the field. Buddy Banks Williams was running a little corner post, trying to hit a deep shot, but the safeties were playing back. They had that covered, and Sawyer Glenny had to run up, try to find somebody in the, you know, the short perimeter there. Uh, found Braylon Naves open, uh, but you know, on the run, you know, wet atmosphere. Braylon Naves is still kind of on the move a little bit. That's a hard throw to make, uh, and if you're if you're Grand Blank, you're happy with that result. Clock frozen, four minutes to go. Second down, 10. Glennie pumps. And he's sacked. For the first time tonight, Grand Blank gets home. It's Jimmy Lacy with the sack. 
Jimmy Lacy. I've been waiting to call his name tonight. He's the sack leader with two on the season on this grand blank defense, and he's a fireball off the edge. They're, right, they're trying to set up a little slip screen here, but Pierre Dukes does a fantastic job of holding up A.J. Hill and then lets Jimmy Lacy just run free at the quarterback, and there's nothing Sawyer Glennie can do besides eat that throw and live to see a long third down here. Jimmy Lacy did not start his high school career as a linebacker. He was a wide receiver. And you could see the speed tracking down Glenny on that play. Third down and a mile. I got to get just past the 25. Glenny dropping back. Stepping up and back into another wall. Grand Blank swarming all over the place. This time it's Carson Lynch and Pierre Dukes. And don't let, don't let Grand Blank get hot here. This is exactly what you want if you're Grand Blank. You want the, a long third down. You want that clock not moving a lot. And then you want your troops rallying to the football there. Pierre Dukes, number 44, and Carson Lynch, number 14, just rallying to the football, not letting the running quarterback who's shown his legs today get outside the pocket there, closing down, collapsing, and getting the ball back to this Grand Blank offense right when they need it most. Flags before Glennie was going to punt in his end zone. I think this flag's going to be on Grand Blank based on how frustrated their sideline is. Here we go. For the snap, substitution infraction, too many men on the field. Defense, five yard penalty, still for a time. You know, Grand Blank actually before the play was trying to call a timeout. I think that's a blessing in disguise because what I would say to them is, who cares? Davison's still punting. You probably need that timeout later. Yeah, yeah. The timeout is way more important than that five yards. Now, if that was a fourth and five, that's a different story to have, right? But they're sitting at a fourth and 19. You'll take that five yards as long as you got the right personnel on the field. Lenny's punt, sidewinder that takes an awesome bounce. Look at this thing roll. Oh, my goodness. This is going to keep on rolling and flip field down to near the 35-yard line. Lawrence Technological University, located in utterly gorgeous Southfield, Michigan. And among the largest college of architecture and design in the nation, they have blue and white days coming up 18th next month, November, and December 9th, too. Go learn more at ltu.edu. You know, Graham, we were talking last drive for Grand Blank. You got to score and you got to do it quick. That's exactly what happened. Now look at it. Just over two minutes to go on the third. Grand Blank, all three timeouts, only down by a couple of scores. They're starting to drive. They're right in this thing. Yep. And just when that turnover on downs on their first drive out of this, you know, that first half looked like it was going to hurt them here. They're sitting at a really good spot, you know, down 14 here. Got to stop on defense. You scored on your last drive. You got a little bit of momentum in your, in your court here. Steel once again suffocated at the line of scrimmage. When Jaden Lockhart gets a hold of you, you're not going anywhere. No, no. You could be the strongest running back. You could be the fastest running back. When you get that big bear hug from Jaden Lockhart, uh, you're not going anywhere, and you're going to go to the ground with him. Uh, you just hope that you get up feeling uh, you're just as fine as you did starting the play there. Uh, good play there by Jaden Lockhart. Just a force in the middle. That D tackle, nose guard position, uh, really read that well and played that well. Steele remains the back with Morrow, who on the last drive threw a touchdown on third and 13. This time he's running, waiting for some potential blocking. He didn't get any of it. Davison strings that thing out well. And once again, Jake's going to need to make magic. Third down and long on the way. And they kind of hurt themselves there. They kind of got a little muddy in the backfield, which slowed the, the, the progression of the play there. Uh, you know, it looked like it was going to be a fake to JT Weber with a lead block out for Jake Morrow. Uh, you know, they kind of just, you know, got cl clogged up there and it had him bouncing and it had happy feet. Uh, you want that play to happen fast. You want him to hit, hit the hole 100 miles per hour and then, you know, you don't want to run lateral. Uh, this defense can run lateral with the best of them. And in that situation, uh, that's a win there for uh, Davison's defense on second down. Well... And they had magic on third down on the last drive. I got to find a little more here. Morrow rolling. Pressure coming. Flag behind the play. Jake Morrow is still alive. He goes out of bounds. And now we check the flag. Where they flew through the flag, usually it's holding.
That is indeed the initial signal. I would be stunned if Davison elects to accept the penalty. This is a situation where you definitely decline. You're sitting at about fourth and ten here. You know, you let your, your defense here you know, get off the field and, and re retrieve this punt. The play holding on the offense. That penalty is going to be declined. Thus, the play is fourth down. Well, Davison defense forced with a challenge. They stiffen, stop Grand Blank, and here comes the punt team. Ben Thompson going to punt for the third time tonight. Buddy Banks Williams, the man back deep for Davison. Took a punt back to the house last week. Davison last week beat Flint Carmen Ainsworth 50 to 14. This week looks a little different. This punt driving him back, you won't even touch it. Keeps on rolling. And it'll die to a stop at the 23. It's State Champs, the mission to cover all sports, and our social media manager, Danny, loves it when we show a little bowling. The Davison girls bowling team has won the Division I State Championship, not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, five times, including the last time back in 2017. Be honest, Grant, when's the last time you, uh, you went bowling? I uh, actually went bowling uh, not too long ago. I uh, didn't do well. Um, you know, rolled I think uh, you know an 80 to a 90. Bowling isn't my forte, uh, but you love when you get a good group and you go bowling and you have a good time. Uh, for sure, for sure, a good old pastime there. Play action fake and a throw over the middle. The catch made, but not a whole heck of a lot. Tackled in the open field was Naves, the guy who caught the first pass of the game, Grant, and they've been going to him a whole heck of a lot ever since. Yeah, and I'd like to see them get a little bit more RPO action, right? When the run isn't there, you protect it with the throw. Uh, short, you know, consistent, uh, you know, high percentage throws like that, you know, a little hitch route. If that linebacker reacts to the run, you replace him with the throw. Uh, you know, you live in a safe world and you get safe results there. Um, you know, they pick up five and a good job there, you know, finding their target. Uh, number 11, Braylon Naves. Under 30 seconds to go in the third. Could be the final play of the third quarter. Each team has scored one touchdown in this quarter. A.J. Hill running up the middle. Davison first down. Across the 30 he goes, up to the 35. And now, looks like we had Howard and Naves, cornerback and wide receiver, locked up near side of the field. Grant, you would know this better than me. You you played in maybe the greatest rivalry in sports, Michigan, Ohio State. As long as there isn't any funny business going on after the plays and not too many flags, I kind of like it when guys are drawn after the play, you know? Oh, yeah. After the play is over, personal foul, defense. After the play is over, personal foul, offense. Those two penalties are going to offset. Results of play will stand first down. Yeah, so that's the two guys they got. They got Howard and Naves, who were both yelling at each other after the play. What's that famous clip? I think it was David Boston for Ohio State and Charles Woodson from Michigan who were yelling at each other after the play. Yep, yep. You love the intensity and those that the rivalries bring. Um, I mean, it just brings out the best in each other. And as long as it doesn't hurt either team, you know, you like a little bit of that trash talk and a little, you know, the players getting into it. Uh, you know, the linemen coming and protecting you downfield, you know, if you get tossed over a little bit. Uh, it's all fun and games, uh, but until it hurts you there. But, you know, fortunately, uh, it'll just result in that first down, and both teams, you know, kind of just crossed out the penalties themselves. Off to the fourth we go. Rivalry game. Anything can happen in the fourth quarter, but right now it's a two-score lead for Davison and their football when we start the fourth quarter right after this. You might not realize it, but tonight you made a difference. Tonight you ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Because even though you just ordered a pizza for dinner, that one little purchase helps make a big difference. For every pizza purchased in the month of October, Hungry Howie's will make a donation to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, all on our way to raising $5 million. So this time you didn't just order pizza. You ordered a little love, hope, and pizza. Hungry Howie's! 
At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common. Officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns. No three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. Welcome back to Grand Blank, everybody. Joshua Britt is a senior defensive tackle at Grand Blank. And you know, we asked Coach earlier on in the week, what is one of Joshua's greatest traits? And he said, oh, that's easy. It's his positive attitude. But that positive attitude was put to the test back in May of 2022 when Joshua lost his mom. Despite all of this adversity and everything he was going through, you know, Coach said he was still in the weight room, putting in that work and really making the most out of his situation. Coach said he's one of the best leaders on the team and by far one of the hardest workers so it really just goes to show you the passion that he has for the game of football and for Grand Blank football as well Evan. Kara thanks so much and look at the end of the day that's the type of thing that makes covering high school sports so fantastic. Glennie on first down thrown over the middle and that pass is incomplete through the hands of Nave so it's second down. Look Grant these are two very good teams. Davison very well could be playing at Ford Field in six seven weeks for a state championship on Thanksgiving weekend but ultimately the whole point of high school sports is not wins and losses it's building better young men building better young women and frankly helping everyone involved get through certain things in their life and, and God bless you Josh Britt for the positive attitude you continue to have when a lot of people wouldn't be as positive as that young guy is. Yeah and his you know his outlook on life is tremendous I mean just talking with coach just the way he's attacked each day regardless of the circumstances that have affected him uh, in his daily life uh, it just goes to show you know how he was raised and what kind of kid he is. Back to A.J. Hill, slipped a couple of tackles and then lowered his shoulder. Purdue had to wrestle him down just about a yard shy of the first down. That's a complete package run, baby. Agility and power. Yep. And A.J. Hill possesses both of those traits. I mean, he'll run through you, but also he'll break tackles. Uh, you know, he's a really you know, elusive kid. He's got an offer from Miami of Ohio, so you know, put him on your radar as a guy that will be playing for another four years after his time's done it at Davidson. Uh, really an elusive kid. I, I touched on it. He reminds me a lot of Travis Etienne, just the way he gets through holes, his shiftiness, and his durability. Uh, and also he's a threat in the receiving game uh, as well. Seven on the play clock on a third down and a long one. They finally gave it to Hill, and they got the first down. Gained about four yards. That's one of those plays, right? You hang on to the ball for a long time, and son, finally someone's got to run with the darn thing. Yeah, yep. and they hold those, and, and that goes back to the Oregon days when I forget the quarterback. I think it was Dixon, uh, Dennis Dixon or Johnny Dixon. He would hold that thing against Michigan, sadly, too. They, they tore us up back in the day, and he would hold that thing for a, a country mile. I mean, just letting it ride. Everyone would crash, and he'd pull it last second. Uh, you know, and that's come back to hurt them a little bit in the first half, but it seems like they've worked on it here at halftime and got it going, uh, and that's really hard to defend, especially when you don't know who has the ball. Uh, really good job there by Sawyer, Glennie, and A.J. Hill. I'm just glad the former Michigan guy is the one who brought up that loss to Oregon, not me. A.J. Hill on the run again. He's across midfield and spinning up to the 47-yard line. You know, the remarkable thing about that Michigan team was, I think they started like fifth in the country. They lose to App State. They lose to Oregon. They still ended up, I think, 8-4 and four and beat Tim Tebow in a bowl game. That was still a really good team. Yeah, I remember watching that bowl game. You know, Lloyd Carr went down there in old fashion and, and tore up Tim Tebow, and everyone thought, you know, the, the Gators were going to pull away uh, and win that one by a big margin. But, uh, you know, don't count out Lloyd Carr and those Wolverines when they need it most. I mean, you know, started the year off a little rocky, uh, but, you know, ended strong. Uh, but I like to say, you know, when you know people bring up the bad moments, I'm like, oh, I was young. I wasn't really watching the game. You know, I was running around with the kids out, out in, the, in the field playing catch during the – during those games. A.J. Hill on the run again. He's got the first down up near the 41-yard line. 
All right, that's enough. We've hit our Michigan football quota of the day, all right? Mm -hmm. And you, you got, what, one more Catholic Central reference coming in you? I, I think yeah. we have one, one more. more. Fair, fair, fair enough. It was a 14-14 game against Cincinnati LaSalle last time I checked. Does this mean I can't give the final score later? Did I hit my quota? No, nope, no. Nope. You can always report on a final score. Uh, anything in between is off limits, though, from here on out. Okay, sounds good. Just messing with you. Giving you a hard time. I know, I know. If you the can't tell by now, we're, we're, I'm a Brother Ice guy, and Evans is a Catholic Central guy, so we're going to bring that up a lot. And the fact we haven't killed each other seven weeks into the year is proof that Catholicism works sometimes. A.J. Hill across the 40, up to the 39. In all seriousness, though, right, this is an interesting spot for Davison. They're coming up on nine minutes to go, up by two scores. They only have the one timeout left as well. So in terms of, quote, unquote, putting the ball game away, you can sense that's what Davison's trying to do with this drive. Yeah, they've kind of entered their four-minute offense, if you will, and that four-minute offense is, is just getting the first down each time, uh, you know, keeping the clock running, uh, sticking with the run game. Uh, you'll see them sprinkling a pass or two here and there when they get the right look, uh, but that four-minute offense is predicated on just draining that clock and trying to finish a ball game. Glennie keeps off the fake to Buddy Banks Williams, and he is ridden down just shy of the first down. It's going to be third down and a long one again. You can tell that they really want to get that you know, that ball carrier in the backfield. Number 44, Pierre Dukes, is just sprinting with his hair on fire trying to tackle someone, uh, but ends up guessing wrong. Uh, you know, Sawyer Glenny with a, a great handoff there. He fakes it, pulls it, uh, just like he should in that read. Uh, you know, when that guy crashes for the running back, you keep it, and he picks up a great chunk there on second down and makes it a, a third and one. Coming up on eight minutes to go. Here's your third down for Davison. Give Hill. Didn't need much, didn't gain much, but he's got the first down up to the 30. And this really important drive for Davison continues and keeps the clock moving. And Hunter Dunaway there with the lead pull right there, number 56, that right guard. They're running a the one back power. Power is a one pull play, right? That backside guard or tackle, depending on how that you know, defensive front aligns. They'll pull to the front side there and just lead block. A.J. Hill does what he does best and just follows his blocker and picks up that first down. Brand Blank does have all three timeouts left. So we see at which point they start thinking about trying to save time. We're still a little bit away from that, but still. Give Hill, run and right. Good blocking again, off right tackle across the 25 he goes, marked right around the 24. And this is the area too, I know they're in a four minute offense, but you know, Grand Blank's kind of running, putting up everyone on the line of scrimmage, putting all their chips on the run. I wouldn't be surprised here if you know, they find a situation in which they feel comfortable, Davidson, you know, it's just a little play action pass here and really kind of put a dagger in this drive and in this game. Clock keeps on ticking. Coming up on seven minutes to go. Glennie keeps. Gets around the left side. First down and more. Sawyer Glennie, foot race, wins it. Touchdown, Davison. There's a flag behind the play. A.J. Hill is none too pleased, the running back for Davison. It's coming back, it's a hold. It's one of the worst feelings when you have a successful play and you run into the end zone, especially when you're the ball carrier and you think everything's looking great, and then you turn around and everyone's walking the opposite way, no one's cheering. Uh, you know, it's a tough sight, uh, but it looks like this one's going to be on uh, Davison, and that one won't count. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty. I think the, the best description of the feeling that you have when you score a touchdown and you realize it's coming back in a hold, it's like that one thing you wanted for Christmas, right? You told your parents, this is what I want, this is what I want. And then on Christmas Day, your brother is the one who gets that present, not you. Mm. No, that's got to be a tough feeling. Uh, you know, I, I had you know two younger sisters growing up, so fortunately I, I didn't get the dollhouses. I didn't get the you know the, the, the whatever they had. I, I got you know the more of the Xbox toys and the Playstations. Uh, so I was I lucked out in that fashion. But they did pull a quick one on me. They, they didn't get me the Xbox. But then ten minutes after Christmas, you know the, the festivities ended. They said, Hey, go look in the other room, and it was sitting there. So props to my parents. Appreciate you, you faking me out that one year, but uh, you know I, you made me wait for it. 
After a five-yard gain for Hill on the last run, we have another flag. Five-yard pace match. Defense. Five yards from the end of the run, still second down. Yes, we still do have five-yard face masks in high school football. That used to be a thing in the NFL. You may remember incidental, five-yard versus 15, and then it got really difficult, so they just made every team 15-yard face masks. Here in high school, we still do have five-yard face mask penalties. Just to wrap up the Christmas discussion, you know you're getting old when you're really happy you get clothes for Christmas or your birthday. I work in broadcasting. Usually I get a new suit jacket for Christmas, and I'm fine with that. A.J. Hill burrows his way up to the 23. That's going to make it third down and three. And this is where you're going to see kind of Davison take over the game. You know, talking with Coach Weingarts, they really wanted to come into this game and control that line of scrimmage. And when you have a two-score lead here with, you know, six minutes and in, in clocking down here in the fourth quarter, this is really where you can just, you know, cement your, your mark on this game and just keep driving the ball. And nothing's worse, uh, you know, as a defensive player than, you know, just getting the ball ran right down your throat and there's nothing you can do about it. And you just watch the time go down and, and you're just hoping for a stop or a turnover. Uh, and this is where you know a 7-0 team that wants to make a long run in this playoffs has to really learn how to finish games, and they have the opportunity to really just take the life out of Grand Blank and the home team, uh, home crowd, excuse me, here right now. Play clock got down to one. Jake Weingarts will burn the timeout. Davison is out of them, but they're leading 35-21, and they got a third down and short coming up with 5.53 remaining in the fourth quarter on this rainy Friday evening in Grand Blank, Michigan. Hungry Howie's a great partner of the State Champs Networks, Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. Tonight, order a little love, hope, and pizza. Help make a difference when ordering Hungry Howie's and their goal of donating five million bucks to the National Breast Cancer Foundation. Order your pizza at HungryHowie's.com. Here's a look at your Mr. Football top 10. This is listed alphabetically, it's not one through 10. You know, the guy who I really enjoyed watching last year, who's back on that list, Desmond Stevens, really good looking player from Clarkston. And then you look at the Anvil Award, recently added Stone Cheney from Detroit Catholic Central, best hair on the list, and Carter Harriman, who we've seen all night for Davison. You know, on the Anvil Award for playing defense, but he's also run for three touchdowns tonight. Yeah, he might have to make an appearance on the, uh, the other watch list there as he's just improving his stock tremendously. Miami of Ohio is getting a really good one in Carter Harriman, uh, just showing dominance both sides of the ball. And oh, by the way, we live in a college football world where just because you start at one place doesn't mean you're going to end at one place. So maybe Carter goes from Mac to someplace else at some point. No matter what, Miami, Ohio getting a good ball player. 5.49 to go after the Davison timeout. I got a third down and three. I formation, Hill the deep back. They pitch it to him, and he does not have the first down. They tackled him at the 21. Lacey the first man to hit him. And now we see what decision Davison makes. Yeah, and if I had any say in it, I'd say, you know what, it's fourth down and three, fourth down and two. You've been successful thus far running the ball. They're going to run in Carter Harriman here. Uh, so I think we all can guess what's going to happen. I mean, they're going to play inside run football here. Inside run is a drill that you do in practice where it's just you're inside the line, right? Your tackle to tackle, your defensive end to defensive end, and your linebackers, and sometimes your safeties are involved too. And you just play right in that box, and it's the strongest man that wins. Uh, and right now they're going to put that on the play here and really try to pull this one out. There's Harriman up the middle. Awfully close. They stacked him up near Carter the 20. The Carter thinks he's got the first down. Grand Blank stepped up in the hole and made the hit. And Grand Blank got the stop. They're alive with 4.58 to go. Very much alive here. I mean, you got three timeouts, you got five minutes. 
I mean, that, you know, that, that second drive of the second half you had, if, if you're Graham Blank, uh, it just goes to show you can score uh, with the right plays and the right calls here, uh, but you know, you got to do it in a fast manner here. You're, you're battling time. Um, you know, Davidson has no timeout, so you have that advantage. Um, but you know, you got five minutes left. You got to find your best plays, your most efficient plays, and downfield plays here. And you got to stay ahead of the chains as well. You can't be putting third and long and second and long situations. Uh, that's where you get predictable, and they can just drop eight, drop seven guys into coverage and really just cover all uh, areas of the field. On a rainy, cold night, Grand Blank needs some juice. Morrow's got the snap. Rolling right, away from pressure. Throwing across his body, caught first down. Anthony Purdue's got it. Good start to the drive for the Bobcats. Good start, moving the chains here. They just, Jake Morrow's gonna roll out of the pocket and then it just becomes a game of who can find the open zone. Who's the open receiver? Jake Morrow does a fantastic job, has all tonight, of really extending the plays, making them you know come alive when it looks like it's dead. Uh, but right now they're in their two minute drill. They're gonna have to find their best plays here and run them at a really good rate and try to find some open guys here. Morrow given time, now flushed out of the pocket and he threw it away as a guy was draped all over him. Tyler Dosh was on his back. For attention to grounding on the play, no foul. Quarterback is out of the free blocking zone. Pass across the line of scrimmage. I don't know if you could hear that. There was no intentional grounding because quarterback Morrow was out of the pocket. So with the guy all over his back, when he threw it out of bounds, no penalty. Yep, yep. And all you got to do in that situation is get it past the line of scrimmage. Uh, if that ball were to come up short, then they would have thrown the flag there. But he gets it past the line of scrimmage. Good job of understanding the situation there. You know, no one's there. Uh, you're about to get tackled. You can feel that pressure. You dirt the ball and you'll live to see you know, another down here. Second down, Morrow's got it again. Rolling right again, floating it down the field, juggled and incomplete. Hoping for steal, Edwards in coverage. And now Jalen's getting up slow. And looks like he's got a little bit of a cramp there. You can see that calf just getting real tight. Uh, you know, these fourth quarters, he, had, you know, he hasn't played in every fourth quarter of this season. Uh, so you know, this is a little bit of a new area for them, right? You know, they've been blowing teams out left and right. Um, so, you know, that, that fourth quarter, you know, that gear that you need sometimes ain't, isn't there when, you, when your players, your starters haven't played a full four quarters here. Um, so, you know, Grand Blank there had an opportunity for a catch and a, and a completion, but uh, Jalen Edwards with a good deflection. Time out on the field as they attend to Edwards. We stay in the Saginaw Valley League for our next game time live broadcast, but we're going up north. Great battle next week. Traverse City Central against Traverse City West. You can watch it live next Friday the 20th at 7 o'clock on the State Champs YouTube channel or, of course, the simulcast on 760 WJR. You know, that's been so much fun for us, Grant, throughout this entire game time live schedule to travel across the state, right? We're outside of Flint this week. We're in DeWitt a couple of weeks ago. We've made trips to the west side. And now we get to go up north. Many people think Traverse City's up north. That's going to be a really fun environment and cool to experience for us next week. Yeah, I'm excited to get up there. I mean, never been up to Traverse City. You know, heard nothing but great things. Uh, you keep telling me how, you know, how great it is up there, the sights, the sounds. Uh, you know, I'm going to make it a little trip out of it, bring the girlfriend, bring the dog. You know, you got a young pup, let him run around a little bit and, and then enjoy some football between two, two, uh, two schools that really want to get after each other. Uh, so it should, should be a you know, make for a great weekend. Traverse City Central's got a cool history. They actually made the state championship game a couple of years ago, played Warren D. LaSalle. Josh Burdum was their Mr. Do-It-Everything that year, linebacker, quarterback, and now Josh is getting some run at Notre Dame. Cool to see. Oh, by the way, you talk about excellent settings for high school football. Yes, Traverse City has a great setting, in, including this setting in Grand Blank. When Grant and I walked into the facility today, we both looked at each other and we went, are we calling a game at a high school or a college facility? This place is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I mean, the scoreboard is, is the biggest I've ever seen at the high school level. I mean, the locker rooms are fantastic. Uh, it's just a, really a fun atmosphere. And I wish I could have played here as, you know, as a high schooler, man. This is a great atmosphere to play in. Morrow on third down. He eluded pressure again. Looking downfield. He threw to the middle of the field, and Steele made a great catch. Daniel was falling to the ground, and somehow he caught it. 
What a catch. I mean, Daniel Steele, we know he's a great running back, but he's showing us that he can be a great receiver as well. That's not an easy catch. Diving inside to your right, catching the ball, and then landing and keeping it off the ground. Uh, then let's not forget Jake Morrow with getting uh, evading the tackle there by Tyler Josh. Tyler Josh had him by the shoe, uh, shoestring, excuse me, and he just jumped out of that and threw a dime to Daniel Steele. Moving again. Morrow down the field, throwing a pick. Nope. Up in the air. Contested, INT. Greg Lawson the third brings it down. A high level hoops player, high points the ball, maybe ends the game. And then you're just running a go route here down to the bottom of the screen to Matthew Evans, number 21. Matthew Evans kind of slows his route. He's looking for a back shoulder throw, uh, but then Greg Larson, Greg Gawson, excuse me, makes a fantastic high point catch, intercepts it, comes down with it, it looks like, yep, grabs it. Oh, nope, definitely not a catch, but the refs didn't see that one. Uh, looks like the refs want to get out here a little bit early. <laughs> they said, you know what, that's an uh, interception. Uh, let's uh, let Davidson run the clock down. Uh, definitely a missed call there by the Stripes. Uh, but if you're Matthew Evans and you're Joe Morrow, Jake Morrow, excuse me, he's expecting you to run through that ball and get, you know, get your depth and get all the way downfield. Uh, and Matthew Evans kind of slows up there and, and allows Greg Larson, Lawson excuse me, uh, to make the interception, or what we thought is an interception and what is an interception, but really should not be an interception. Yeah, watching the replay, he – he dropped the ball on the way down, so it makes me feel a little bit better because I'm watching the play going, wait, the ball hit the ground, right? Yeah, definitely did. Anywho, great play for Greg. Excellent hoops player. A bunch of Division I offers. Davison keeps it on the ground, and there is a lot of real estate on the left side. First carry of the game for Jacob Garris. An excellent one across the 35. Davison firmly in clock-killing mode, up by a couple of scores. And they're going to be in true four-minute mode. As you see, this class getting down under four minutes. They're going to hand the ball off to Jake Garris, uh, who's a guy that has seen some time this year. They've been blowing out teams, so they get a lot of guys in, which helps them late in the season. I mean, he's got 10 rushes for 90 yards and a touchdown in the season, so he's no stranger to holding the rock there uh, and running the ball. Ran it well, burst through the second level, uh, and made a really good run and got them a first down. Glenny fakes and throws. Wide open man across the middle. Hughes makes the catch. Flag down as he got across the 40. We will check the flag. Clock stops for the moment with 3.54 to go. 3.41 to go, beg your pardon. During the play, pass interference, offense blocking downfield before the pass, 15 yards from the previous spot, still first down. This goes back to what Jake Weingart's told Kara coming off the field at halftime, right? The odds are in Davison's favor of winning this game. There's under four minutes to go. They've got the ball up by two scores. I do think this is one of those games, Grant, for Davison where they're going to learn a lot about themselves. You've talked a lot. They haven't really played a close game since the first game of the year. They played a close one tonight. It's one of those games where you win, you don't look great, but you still grow from it too. Yep, yep, and it doesn't hurt your record. You're going to go ahead and claim the, the South Saginaw Valley League Conference here after a win tonight. Um, you know, but you do it in a fashion which you, you made some mistakes, but like you said, you can learn from, uh, and that's going to help uh, you later down the line, especially in these late games in October and November. Uh, where you're really challenged by some of these perennial powerhouses late in this bracket uh, of a playoff in Division I. Oh, by the way, let's go back to the, the first week of the year when Davison played De La Salle, the two-time defending D2 state champs. It actually took two days to complete because the weather wasn't great. Davison was behind most of the ball game, but they would end up coming back. You're seeing some highlights here from the two-day extravaganza. Davison ends up coming back. 16 seconds left. Glenny finds Hill for a touchdown. Davison wins 31-26. It was well worth the wait for Davison. And their coaching staff talked about it, right? When we spoke to him on Zoom a couple of days ago, they talked about the fact that, hey, yeah, we, we knew we were confident. We knew we were a talented team. But when you beat a program like De La Salle, back-to-back -back defending state champions in Division II, 
of course that's going to give you an ego boost to start the season. How couldn't it? No, absolutely. I mean, you beat a back-to-back -to -back defending state uh, you know, champs in, in Division II, uh, you know, a game that you, know, you probably come in as the underdog, uh, but you come out and you, with a win. Uh, and you, it builds a lot of confidence, gives your offense and your defense a lot of momentum moving forward, which has really propelled them. I mean, after that game, they won 52 to 21 versus Granville, 49 to 7 versus Traverse City Central, uh, you know, 37 to 22 versus Second at Heritage. I mean, the scores keep adding on, um, so you know, it really propelled them, uh, and it's going to do them well later in the season as well when they see some of these teams that have you know, the, the talent that De La Salle has. Rand Blank burned a timeout after the last play. It's second down, 27. Glenny rolling right, he pumps and then just tucks the ball. So Grand Blank burns the second timeout with just over three minutes to go. The clock kept rolling, they're going to have to add a couple of seconds back on. Did you know that Tim Thomas, former NHL goalie, former Boston Bruin and alum at Davison High, in the 1991 hockey quarterfinals that went to six overtimes, he made 62 saves. Although the team lost to Port here on Northern, Tim went on to have a great career. Won the Vesna Trophy a couple of times, the Conn Smythe in 2011, as the Bruins won the Stanley Cup. For those not in the know, the Vesna Trophy is awarded to the best NHL goalie, and the Conn Smythe is given to the person who plays the best in the playoffs. Nevin's looking at me, and I'm being educated at the moment. I, did not I was know look. That. <laughs> I was gonna say, Grant has let it slip off the air that he's not a huge hockey guy. He's not a huge Red Wings guy. So I just wanted to make sure you and anyone who was like Vesna, Con Smythe, just make sure everyone knows. You know? No, I appreciate that, and, and I should know that. I mean, my dad loves hockey. He's always playing. Uh, you know, still playing. That's his kind of conditioning these days. He, you know, plays a little pickup hockey when he can. So. I've uh, been around it, just never participated myself, but I love the game, and, and it's just such an intense game, and on ice, too. I mean, forget about it. What those guys do is amazing. Tough loss for the Wings last night at a very good New Jersey Devils team that is widely considered to be one of the best in the Eastern Conference this season. Wings back home tomorrow night for the season opener against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Our friends, Ken Daniels, Mickey Redmond, will have the call on Valley Sports Detroit. God bless Mickey and his flannel. The man is a national treasure. Bingo, bingo. Let her go, boys. Please never leave me, Mick. Third down, 25. Glennie keeps. And he's wrapped up across the 25. Not going to get that first down. Carson Lynch makes the tackle. And now Grand Blank. We'll burn that final timeout. They are going to get the ball back, Grant. Down by two scores, but they're getting it back with about three minutes remaining. Davison will punt it after this break. Come on back. The Get To Foundation Speaker Series invites you to hear John Gordon's powerful message of how a get to attitude can radically change your life. John has inspired millions on the Today Show, CNN, Fox, CNBC, and through his 28 books, including the timeless classic, The Energy Bus. This event will be at Lawrence Technological University on Tuesday, October 17th at 11.30 a.m. For more information, visit the website on the flyer. All right, we're back. Fourth down coming up for Davison. It's about 20 yards, so they're going to punt here. Three minutes remaining. Grand Blank, Davison, all out of timeouts. It's a two-score game. Davison leading Grand Blank 35-21. So, Grant, if you're Grand Blank, depending on how this punt goes, let's say you get it around the 40 or 45, we're going to find out how quickly they move it and what the operation ends up being. First, we'll watch Sawyer Glenny punt it away with JT Weber back deep. His punt... Off the side of his foot, angled away from Weber, takes a darn good roll, keeps on rolling inside the 40. Grand Blank will start it at the 39 with 2.49 to go, down 35-21. A couple of years ago, 2021, awesome sports season at Grand Blank. Boys basketball team behind Ty Rogers and R.J. Taylor won their first ever boys basketball state championship in that very strange COVID season. All worth it for Grand Blank. They ended up winning the state title. Then, in the spring, baseball team follows it up on the campus of Michigan State off the banks of the Red Cedar. They end up winning the state championship. That Grand Blank basketball program is so good. Year after year, last year they lost in the semis to Cass Tech. 
literally took a buzzer beater, banked in three by Darius Acuff to beat him last year. And I would have to imagine they're going to be pretty darn good again this year. Here we go. Let's find out how Grand Blank attacks it out of timeouts. Down by 14. 2.50 to go. Morrow facing a lot of pressure. He's stepping up away from it. Now he tucks and runs. He's brought down from behind. Nice job by Warren Kane. Warren Kane, a defensive end for, for this Davison defense. Uh, lengthy kid, 6'4", 220, uh, but has good speed, as you see. Just hawked down uh, Jake Morrow there uh, to, you know, to get him uh, from running uh, even further. Uh, good tackle there in open space. And Blank still hasn't snapped the ball. About 20 seconds ran off between the last play and this throw incomplete. Flag. Morrow short-armed the throw, and he may have gotten hit late. Once again, Jalen Edwards hobbling back to the defensive backfield. And now the officials will sort out all the flags. Upping the passer, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Again, Grant, that goes back to what Davison's coaching staff told us at halftime, and I know what they're going to tell the guys after the game. It's another penalty, just way too many. Yeah, and that's by Jalen Edwards, who's a senior in this linebacking core. Uh, you know, a guy that you know you would expect to know better. Um, you know, but it's hard to pass up a hit on the quarterback, uh, especially in these rivalry games. But you, you don't want it if, it if it hurts your team. That time he's going down. Tag team got Morrow in the backfield. Warren Kane and Tyler Dosh. The huge sack back to the 46. And, and Warren Kane and Tyler Dosh do a fantastic job. They're on opposite ends here. Both DNs are just going to wrap and rush upfield right and make no, there's no room to go outside. Uh, and that'll come from experience here. Jake Morrow will understand, hey, I got to step up, not out. Uh, you know, most of the times you find success here in the later, you know, in the college and NFL of stepping up and not out. You got those pass rushers that can really get to the quarterback. Morrow rolling away from Ken. He does get away from Kane this time and just tops out of bounds right around midfield. You can kind of sense here Grand Blank running on fumes, Grant. Down 14, out of timeouts, 140 to go. There is still time. It's trending toward a Davison win. But, man, if I'm Grand Blank, a young team with three sophomore starters on their offensive line, really young offense overall, I know a loss is never great. I know no one really believes in moral victories, but you hung with one of the best football teams in Michigan tonight. Yeah, and, it, you know, it's tough, you know, especially as a kid and a coach to find the positives in a loss here, especially, you know, with so much on the line for the Saginaw Valley South Conference. Morrow brought down in the backfield. Armstead with the monster sack. And Grand Blank running out of time. A really good job here. They're just going to get the linebackers rushing up the field here. They know they're going to throw, right, so they're not going to give Jake Morrow any time. Uh, Chuck Armstead has his eyes set on Jake Morrow here, gets a great sack, wraps him up. You know, and Jake Morrow has shown to get out of those you know, at times tonight. Uh, and so Chuck Armstead really wraps up tight there and secures him and brings him to the ground. Last gas for Grand Blank. They've got the ball at their own 34. they got to get to Davison's 42. Morrow needs all the pixie dust he's got. They throw it over the middle. The catch is made, tackled well shy of the first down. That's going to end it. Robbie Martin makes the tackle. Lattimore made the catch. And Davison advances to 8 and up. I know a lot of people think it's going to be a Belleville cakewalk in Division I. But Grant, you know this as well as I do. On any given day, it is a gauntlet. Five straight weeks to win a state championship. And when you look at Davison, their senior quarterback, Sawyer Glennie, who's grown up in this program his whole life, the receivers they've got on the outside, the experienced offensive line, the running backs, and all those hard hitters we saw on defense. I was curious, walking into this building tonight, all right, does Davison have the medal? 
I don't know about you, but for me, I think they got a shot to make a darn good run. Yeah, I do as well. I mean, they got the athletes that compete with anyone. I mean, they got you know, threats on the outside and Braylon Naves and, and, and the running back in A.J. Hill. And like you said, Sawyer Glennie, who's kind of having that motion picture type senior season, uh, you know, with his dad on the sideline coaching the defense. Uh, you know, it's really setting up to be an interesting, uh, you know, bracket, you know, and playoff uh, picture here in the Division One race. Um, like you said, you know, Belleville, you know, probably has, you know, a little bit of the better odds. Uh, but you can't count anyone out, especially when that weather starts tightening up and it gets cold and, and, the, and the, the climate affects you. Uh, you got to bring your A game. And right now, uh, you know, they had made some mistakes today, Davison did, uh, but they're going to find their groove here and they're going to take this and propel them uh, forward here. And I think they got a bright future ahead this year. That's for sure. One final knee for Sawyer Glenny. One final week of the regular season. Davison celebrating a rivalry win against a Grand Blank team that gave him a lot of effort and a lot of fight tonight. But Davison wins again. 8-0, and oh, off to Lapeer next week, and then it's on to the playoffs. For anyone in Division I who's not paying attention to these boys in maroon, yellow, and white, I would advise you to start paying attention. Yep, yep, they're putting the state on notice. I mean, 8 0, they just you know clinched the Saginaw South Valley Conference there. You know, they're, they're playing their best ball here late in the season. Uh, but a game that they can come back to and, and clean up and find some mistakes and fine tune it, especially just in time for these playoffs to start in a couple weeks. Uh, so this team is one to be, you know, recognized and one to be respected. Uh, and, they, and they beat a good team in Grand Blank. Uh, you know, got to give Grand Blank their, their props here. You know, like you said, you know, you try to find moral victories and losses, and I think they do. They have some there. You know, got a quarterback that's a sophomore in Jake uh, Morrow that is going to have a bright future here. Uh, and then some other athletes in Grand Blank's, uh, you know, defense and offense that have really bright futures. Uh, you know, but, you know, for, for Davison, I mean, you got to come away with today. You know, you learn some things. Uh, but in, in the end, it's going to help you here late, late in the season here for this playoff push. Carter Harriman, one of the best middle linebackers in Michigan. We came into this game excited to see him play defense. Oh, by the way, on offense, he ran for three touchdowns. The man who is not only one of the best linebackers in Michigan, also maybe he has the best neck roll. And he's standing by with Carol Isles on the field. Right, Carter, very impressive performance tonight. Two touchdowns on the night. What was working for you offensively? Um, they just put me in on the short yard situations, and um, I just had to get the first down and kept my legs moving. And um, the blockers up front did a great job, so just got the first down. And defensively, you know, started a little, you know, maybe not as strong as you guys would want to, but coming out of halftime, you guys were very strong. What changes did you make? Um, we just had to do what we did. Like, just we weren't running our stuff right, so we had to just lock in, and um, we were beating ourselves the first half. So we just had to make some adjustments and um, just not beat ourselves. To come in here and to beat your rival on the road, how does that feel? Uh, it feels great. They talked a lot the whole summer, the whole season, and um, we knew it was just going to be another game. It's definitely a lot of hatred towards each other, but it was a great win. All right, congratulations, thank Carter. Go thank celebrate. You. Thank you. Back to you, Evan. Hey, Kara, thank you. And God bless Kara and everyone down on the sidelines who didn't have the advantage of being in this toasty press box. And I mean toasty. The heat was on. Grant, before we sign off, any final thoughts, my friend? So far, it's been a fantastic year. I'm enjoying calling these games. Man, it's sad that it's coming to an end, but uh, you know the best football is ahead here for the state of Michigan and excited to see what teams prevail that we saw uh, throughout the season. You can't get rid of me yet, dude. We're going to Traverse City next week, and then we got a couple of playoff games to call. Okay, so just can't get rid of me yet. All right, I'm just saying. Congratulations, Davison. You're a heck of a football team. Excited to see where their journey takes them over the next few weeks and excited to take our journey to Traverse City for our final regular season game time live broadcast next week. As for this one, Davison takes down Grand Blank and the Cardinals win again. They are 8-0. For Grant Perry, Carol Isles down on the sideline, Chuck, John, and all our hard work and crew behind the scenes, Evan Stockton saying thanks. Go enjoy the rest of your Friday night and your weekend. Davison beats Grand Blank on this Friday night. Champs Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by 
Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics.